please go ahead sir we are live yeah can, can you can you just share let me share the screen yeah good afternoon everyone uh welcome to this uh, session uh, as uh, organized by astrocham on drones and mining and uh, really appreciate uh, uh, all the all the participants who have been kind enough to join in uh, for this session uh, to share their rich experience in their uh, respective fields uh, well the the structure are going to change uh, a little bit uh, uh, we will uh, be starting off with uh, Ms. mr dube uh, mr dube uh, has some uh, time constraints and uh, Everyone will be having around about approximately around 15 minutes, although there's no hard and fast restriction in time, so that uh, uh, there is scope for uh, uh, sufficient uh, Q&A at the end of things. Now, just to start things off, I would like to put things in perspective. Sorry, it looks like uh, I have Some teething issues. Uh, is my is my screen visible to everyone, sir? Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. So quickly, uh, b before I get into uh, uh, the things, and today is uh, the reason why we all are here together. I just quickly like to introduce uh, all the panelists, and uh, e each one of them will be uh, uh, joining in one after the other and uh, giving their views. So, Mr. Mr. Dubey has does not need any introduction at all, and uh, he has been leading the charge from. Uh, uh, from the side of Mocha, and he has been uh, actually the flag bearer for for the drone industry in in, in, a, in a big big way. So uh, I, Mr. Mr. Dubey, I think it'll be I won't be doing justice if I if I give any uh, uh, read out your profile or give any uh, additional information <laughs> about you. So uh, uh, was uh, uh, Sanjeev. Nobody's interested. Yes. Uh, I think people are more interested in question yes. answers. So that so that's why that's why you know a lot of people be eager to uh, you know uh, hear you and that's why we'll uh, uh, you know after i just do the introduction i, I will leave it to you to uh, take things onwards from there and uh, i would appreciate if uh, all the speakers can introduce themselves a little bit and give their background uh, so that uh, uh, you know uh, everybody has a perspective of what they're doing uh, very, very, very quickly. Uh, as for the mining industry is concerned, uh, there are there's a fair amount of challenges. Uh, people have traditionally used uh, conventional survey methods, uh, which have a tremendous amount of uh, error. Uh, it's a question of time when you use a GPS or a total station. Uh, there's a lot of uh, effort required, a lot of planning required, uh, and uh, it is extremely time consuming. The amount of the quantum of equipment that's required to cover the large area very quickly uh, is, is exceedingly uh, uh, significant as well. So as per data, there is roughly a mismatch of around 150 crores a month. And uh, there is an extreme amount of uh, revenue loss from non-working mines. Um, on account of non-availability of centralized digital repository for consolidation and validation of data reports. Plus, one aspect which is not mentioned out here, I've uh, failed to mention out here is uh, boundary surveys is an issue where uh, drones can also play uh, a major role uh, play a major role in uh, uh, excuse me I think there's can, can play a major role while uh, doing uh, uh, a survey of encroachment uh, and uh, doing a uh, how much area has been uh, encroached on whether the boundaries have been uh, adhered to all that information can also be uh, uh, determined uh, using drones very, very successfully. Now, if you add all, add all that in, uh, the drone industry can address the many challenges which are faced by uh, the mining community in a big way. Uh, won't get into all these details, but just give you an insight into uh, the amount of uh, impact uh, uh, my losses from mining, illegal mining, etc., encroachments, environmental issues, that uh, we, we uh, keep hearing about, whether it's Karnataka, whether it's Goa, whether it is the eastern part of the country. There are many, many uh, issues which, uh, which, which prevail. And uh, by deploying technology, we all can uh, benefit uh, tremendously. Uh, and I can speak from personal experience as well, because I've been uh, pushing uh, geospatial technology in terms of conventional serving technology for uh, more than 20 years. 
uh, and uh, I've been you know involved in trying to get uh, long range scanners, scanners introduced, etc. But uh, have been very very uh, uh, gung ho about uh, the drone technology and. Uh, from a couple of years ago, uh, when the clearances and the rules and regulations weren't there, you could see, uh, you know, the eagerness from the side of the mining community to adopt this technology because there's a huge need that uh, the, the community felt. In fact, if I go back to my uh, experience from five, six, seven years ago, this is one of the uh, industries which had a clear-cut idea uh, what they wanted to do with uh, uh, drones. Uh, if the regulatory issues were sorted out. Uh, well, quickly touching on the root cause uh, of uh, um, gaps, etc. It's, it's, it's basically uh, uh, the normal processes are very slow. The normal tools that you use uh, are extremely slow. At times you have uh, accessibility issues. Mining is a uh, extremely, uh, can be extremely dangerous environment. So safety is, is a major issue. Uh, obviously, uh, environmental issues, danger uh, to and from uh, wildlife is a challenge. Uh, in, in many cases, accessibility to areas is a huge issue. Uh, and uh, you need to get 3D validation of data. At the end, at the end of the day, volumetric survey becomes important. And uh, uh, you have to use uh, uh, the, the data effectively uh, to, to get the uh, required output. And um, Few years ago, uh, long-range scanners were adopted in a big way uh, by the mining community, especially the coal mining uh, industry, as such. But uh, this also poses uh, a, a lot of challenges because uh, these equipment are uh, extremely exorbitant, uh, difficult to repair. Uh, many cases, or in fact, no, if not most, they have to be sent abroad uh, for for repairs. Uh, you have to train, uh, impart training. Uh, uh, to, to people and there's a lot of dependency on uh, getting the people trained and getting them equipped uh, properly to process, capture and analyze the data. And there is uh, this huge uh, uh, data processing time which is involved because uh, uh, just imagine if you have a long range scanner with one, one kilometer range, the amount of data it's going to collect and uh, you need a significant amount of computing power as well. So this uh, just uh, quickly uh, to introduce uh, what are the challenges uh, that everyone's face? And we hope to uh, hear during uh, today's session uh, about what the drone industry can offer directly from uh, uh, some of the representatives of the drone industry uh, and what kind of software solutions can be offered. Uh, we have uh, uh, people representing uh, that segment as well. And obviously, uh, we, we have uh, the mining community present out here as well. Uh, and we hope uh, they will give their perspective and their experience uh, when having used, uh, um, you know, drone in their uh, operations. And we hope that uh, uh, that information percolates down and other uh, mining community members who are planning to uh, adopt drone technology or have uh, similar issues, they can uh, uh, learn from this and do some benchmarking, which which can be extremely helpful. Uh, so, so very quickly, uh, you know, I, I will quickly uh, introduce myself uh, after uh, uh, giving a quick, quick introduction why we all are here. Uh, my name is Sanjeev Trehan, and I'm uh, the Director of Business and Development and Sales uh, for uh, Trimble. Uh, I've been part of the geospatial industry for now 20, 22 plus years. So very quickly, uh, moving along, why, what, what do we do? Why am I here? What is Trimble all about for those people who are not uh, familiar? So Trimble is the first commercial manufacturer of GPS in the world, and uh, it's a 40 plus year old company. And we have been offering solutions for the UAV community for. Uh, pretty much uh, since inception. We used to manufacture UAVs ourselves, but we exited that and uh, we support the industry now uh, by providing solutions, uh, uh, touching various uh, value, various points of the value chain as far as the UAV industry is concerned. So this just signifies like what all uh, the touch points that we have uh, in terms of uh, uh, the UAV industry. We do provide uh, uh, positioning sensors, positioning technology which is embedded in many, many UAVs uh, across the world and uh, now in India. We do have uh, software uh, products for processing and stitching images, etc. Uh, and then we have, uh, uh, you know, end user application, al analytics software in form of a wonderful software called eCognition. Uh, there is also certain proprietary technology we have in form of uh, the Trimble uh, Aplanix uh, DG uh, that hopefully we'll have another session sometime 
and cases interest because that uh, is going to change uh, the way things are looked out and how data is collected. It does add a lot of value. So this is just, just puts in perspective, we try to uh, add uh, a touch point in the entire continuum uh, the process from, uh, uh, from capturing the data, uh, from positioning, providing base stations, et cetera, uh, for people who are using UAVs uh, and uh, for processing the data and doing analytics from the data. So there are multiple touch points out there. This is just to give you a quick snapshot of what we're talking about. These boards, unknowingly or unknowingly, uh, a lot of the uh, UAVs have these boards integrated uh, for precision mapping and surveying. That's that's our uh, basic area of uh, um, operation. And obviously, like uh, many many uh, users uh, in the mining domain, use our uh, receivers for surveying mapping. Uh, but uh, these are also used by the drone community for uh, uh, RTK or PPK survey as as base stations. There's another interesting piece of technology which can be extremely useful. It's uh, picking up in, in this country, but it's already well established uh, across the world where uh, uh, they use uh, satellite-based differential corrections so that you don't need to use base stations and you don't need to do setups. So areas where you want to do a linear survey or, uh, or cover large areas without having uh, to go through the setup process, then this becomes a very, very interesting alternative. Yeah, this is the software I was talking about. Uh, uh, we, we have various processing platforms which can be used uh, in terms of uh, post-processing the data, doing uh, volume analysis, doing uh, stitching the photogrammetry part, and uh, doing analytics. So uh, I'll just move on with that. And finally, uh, before I hand it over, uh, this is an interesting project. It, it's, it's a Planix uh, UAV. It's, it's a Genesis-based IMU with certain uh, proprietary functionalities, which allows you to uh, uh, operate and capture data without uh, really having uh, GCPs on the ground. Uh, that helps you have a better coverage uh, with minimal overlap of 30 to 40%. So you can fly more in a less amount of time. So this was a quick uh, introduction as far as I'm concerned. Uh, if there are any questions, we can take time permitting, but uh, today you're here, uh, here to uh, uh, listen to uh, the other uh, uh, speakers. And uh, Mr. Dubey, uh, if it'd be great if we can start off with you, and I'll turn turn it over to you now, uh, because uh, I'm sure uh, there are a lot of a lot, lot of people in the community out here today who is eagerly waiting uh, uh, wait, waiting to listen to you, especially since I have personally experienced that the mining community uh, is vibrant and looking for solutions, uh, and uh, I think from the regulatory perspective, not many people understand what needs to be done. Uh, and including whether it's the drone drone drone, uh, drone companies or the mining community, etc. I think there has to be uh, they need to understand how much incredible work Moka has done over the last uh, uh, year or two years, and uh, what is the uh, impact of not following the regulation, and what regulation has been introduced which makes everyone's lives predictable and easier. Over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Sanjeev. Uh, namaskar and a very good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I'll keep it short uh, so that uh, we can take more questions and make it a little more interactive rather than me going on and on. Uh, uh, see, any sector, uh, first of all, I can also congratulate uh, for uh, uh, SHM for setting this up uh, for mining. Mining is uh, very clearly one of our very, very, uh, what do you say, lucrative and attractive and juicy uh, uh, sectors, which we uh, are literally drooling from the drone sector. We are drooling. Uh, at the opportunity uh, that exists in mining. Uh, key reason being, as uh, Sanjeev also mentioned in his opening uh, comments, they say, uh, what do you use a drone for? Basically, anything which is dull, dull, dirty, or dangerous. And all three apply in the mining sector. Uh, a lot of that work, uh, surveillance work is dull. Uh, a lot of that is, is uh, dirty stuff. I, mean, I, I say that with all due respect. And also dangerous. And a lot of these things can be very easily uh, done by drones at a fraction of a cost. And they don't even form unions. So uh, for uh, from the mining sector, I think uh, this is one of the best and the most obvious. And also because uh, there is no privacy issue because most of the mines are far away from uh, human settlements. So this whole uh, uh, risk around Papa Bravo, Bravo Victor, as we say, people building vehicles, people building and vehicles are all uh, not there in the vicinity uh, of, uh, of a mine as much. I mean, everything is relative. So I, I, when I say, of course, there are people buildings and vehicles in a mining area also. But I'm saying as compared to urban usage uh, of uh, drones, mining for that, from that perspective, from a regulatory perspective, is a little more easier to manage and to easier to give exemptions to. And uh, uh, 
so uh, coming uh, uh, taking a step backwards and just talking about drones uh, uh, in general any sector which we have to promote uh, it basically comes down to three very basic things uh, i mean there's a photos framework and all that but uh, just three basics demand supply regulations and all three have a have a role to play on each other on the demand side uh, uh, i don't want to go on and on uh, if you've done a little bit of googling uh, on drones you know that many sectors in many areas like locus control or swamitva which is the uh, uh, the land mapping in uh, in uh, uh, 6.6 lakh villages okay uh, for oil pipelines for power line uh, uh, trans uh, surveillance uh, and agriculture sites so in most of these cases uh, these are our focus areas uh, we have been uh, uh, doing uh, giving clearances on a fast track basis okay Uh, so that's on the demand side uh, uh, because our uh, digital sky platform which is that uh, one stop shop uh, uh, platform for giving uh, online uh, approvals we don't want any one of you to come to delhi and come to either the ministry or dgc and and, and uh, fill up forms and uh, seek permissions all that uh, is uh, inshallah very soon going to get transferred to the digital sky platform which is already on the beta version is on and uh, on 15th august we launched uh, uh, quite a few features there on 2nd of october the first phase uh, there are certain uh, milestones which are covered under uh, beta phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 most of those things uh, the phase 1 is going to get launched on, uh, on 2nd of october so the whole idea is to make it as seamless and uh, and easy for you so that at click of a button you can just come and take your drone permissions because we don't want you we want you to we focus more on your mining business and and making money for yourself for your company for your families and give us taxes in return rather than wasting time on filling up forms uh, and and wait for uh, uh, some officer or the other to give you the permissions so that's on the demand side on the supply side uh, we are we have speeded up the ui and uh, issue uh, every drone which is npnt compliant all drones have to be if they fly in india have to be npnt compliant which basically means uh, no permission no take off uh, other than smaller drones certain weight categories and certain height categories which are exempt most of the other drones especially in the mining area they'll they'll require they'll be heavier drones and uh, much more capable and they'll require uh, permissions and uh, for that uh, you uh, have to be issued a ui the unique identity number just like we have a pan we have a ui uh, and that we have speeded up uh, parallelly for the legacy drones which are not npnt compliant we also started in in january uh, earlier this year the dan concept uh, where you you just come on a very user friendly uh, site and uh, in 8 to 10 minutes you get a dan online no no permission required no no human interference that's in a completely uh, no human uh, involvement kind of a, a, a process we started uh, which is the dan the drone acknowledgement number okay uh, then uh, you also need a operator permit uh, just like a driving i mean uh, when you drive a car you your car has to be registered and the, and you need to have a driver's license so for the driver's license is called uaop uh, uh, unmanned aircraft uh, uh, operator permit so for that operator permit also uh, right now you require mha clearance and uh, we have uh, had multiple rounds of discussions with mha and we are trying to speed up the uh, uh, the uh, the security clearance because any manned aircraft uh, manned or unmanned anything which flies in the country which the uh, capabilities as that of a drone need uh, to be security cleared so uh, right now i think some 30 plus uh, requests have already gone to mha we are tracking it very closely with the nodal officer in mha and hopefully Uh, the the first uaop uh, we are also expecting should be done uh, before on or before 2nd of october uh, very quickly just jumping to bv loss bv loss is ultimately in mining you will be doing bv loss because uh, right now uh, from a security and a technology uh, uh, evolution perspective we only allow v loss visual line of sight so visual line of sight is any anyway limited it's about 100 meters 200 uh, i have poor eyesight but many of you have good eyesight maybe you can fly up to say 500 meters but uh, uh we ultimately the future of drones lies with beyond visual line of sight which we call bb loss beyond visual line of sight 20 uh, consortia have already been given this is like the drug discovery it's like a, a corona covid drug discovery so we've given the uh, permissions to 20 consortia all these in, except for six of consortia who actually came to delhi and made presentations to the steering committee before this whole march uh, corona uh, uh, lockdown started so after that uh, we've never done this in 72 years but for the first time in seven decades we actually did a lot of these uh, interactions over video conferencing and some 14 more companies were given uh, permissions on a video conference uh, and exchange of documents through through emails and all so now 6 uh, 4 plus 16 20 companies have been given the uh, permission to do the bv loss experiments 
they are supposed to do uh, they're just waiting for the security clearance the moment that happens uh, maybe in september and october uh, and november three months they'll finish the 100 hours the mandatory 100 hours of uh, testing that they have to do and based on the test findings and the uh, the videos and all the log sheets and all that we will develop the specs the specs for beyond visual line of sight because that's beyond uh, uh, human eye so there's a huge risk of uh, hack and fall it can be hacked it can fall and can cause uh, damage to both uh, uh, people and property so once that those uh, those specs come in uh, we will then uh, release the first draft and the second draft and then maybe inshallah six months or eight months down the line it's just like drug, drug discovery as we said so once those uh, documents are approved by the wider industry and the academia and the regulators it will be released uh, and i'll just rush through because i know time is running around i said i want to make it more interactive the draft the us rules uh, uh, during the corona thing we used the corona period to actually come up with the draft us rules uh, and uh, some 1240 comments have come in many of them are very nice comments there's a separate team regulatory team in moca and dgca which is working parallelly uh, uh, in a separate room every day every day going through those 1240 comments and incorporating and making changes in the draft rules and uh, i think the draft rules should come out uh, very soon mid september or something on uh, 4th of july we uh, released the green zones we identified the green zones in india that's about uh, i would say 35 to 40 percent of india uh, after uh, due approval from the intelligence bureau and uh, those green zones were opened up in 4th of july this year and on 15th of august we opened up the yellow zones also the only difference is at this moment because of certain security restrictions we are not allowed to show the maps now you may say yeah, jab map nahi hoge, they are fly kaise karenge. so i understand there is a little bit of uh, a little bit of back and forth uh, going on and uh, in fact on wednesday we have yet another round of discussions with the intelligence bureau and some of the mha officials and hopefully we will find some solution because they are naturally concerned that if you put up the uh, the green and the yellow zones literally we are we are giving away national secrets for free secrets which we actually protect with our lives we are actually going to put it on a screen and say hey mr chinese or hey mr pakistani here is a here is a sensitive zone uh, please mark it on your missile uh, attack zones okay so this is a natural concern we have to find a find a way out so that while the interest of the drone industry is also done and we can release these maps in the public domain so in the back end so now if you say uh, a mine uh, suppose a mine in jharkhand that particular mine if you say okay i want to fly here we all know that it's not a sensitive zone there's no military cantonment or a air air force station close by you send us the coordinates of that and we will work in an interactive manner with you and we'll give you the permission so because the green and the yellow zones are already notified so we know the red zones okay it's just that we can't show it to you so in the interim the show must go on we cannot stop the show so if there is a particular mine and i can promise you right now on behalf of mocha and dgc if you have a mine where you want to fly the drone just send us the coordinates and we'll figure out a way we'll work with you okay uh, to to get you the necessary permissions and also to to uh, see and tell you that actually this falls under green zones of flat no problem or it's in, under a yellow zone so there are certain protocols and we have to take uh, the air force permission and air traffic control uh, uh, approvals which is again our problem that's not your problem we'll work with you to ensure that your drone flies okay then uh, on flying training uh, uh, nothing had happened uh, for, for a very long time and uh, uh, now in the last three weeks uh, some 11 flying training schools uh, because see uh, people who fly the mining drones will be uh, these are specialized products specialized items specialized uh, tools which are very costly so the guy who's going to fly cannot be the shadi wala guy jisko aise bas sikha diya aur usne shadi mein photo khinchna shuru kar diya so your people and your operators will be extremely uh, capable people they need to undergo training okay so uh, some 11 uh, in the last 3 4 weeks uh, na, some 11 flying training schools have now been given permissions to uh, start the uh, drone training uh, lastly on the uh, on the funding side many of our youngsters uh, who are in this field uh, they are short of funds these are youngsters uh, driven by passion Vipul Singh, you'll hear him uh, very soon. Uh, he is full of anger against the government. So uh, we understand yes, there are constraints. We are in the midst of uh, the worst recession in 100 years. Okay, We are planning to talk about, uh, uh, we have been talking about this Disha fund, which you might have heard and read about. Disha stands for drones for infra, security, healthcare, and agri. So infrastructure, security, healthcare, and agri, these are the four biggest, biggest use cases on which uh, we want to encourage our youngsters maybe sooner or later i mean every dark day ends and as they say never uh, let uh, every calamity is an opportunity so uh, hopefully the moment things get a little better and we get some funds uh, we ha i have been personally promised that whatever best can be done by the expenditure uh, uh, department they will uh, release some funds for us and we want to give this as a grant we will do the shootouts and the hackathons and the shootouts we'll have a completely independent panel 
of experts, no involvement of the ministry because we don't want to be involved in these technical decisions. People are far, far wise and uh, intelligent on the drone area. They are the ones who run the panel. And that panel will do the contest and pick up the top 10 or top 20 ideas or top 20 companies and give them say one crore, two crore or five crores that that amount is to be decided yet. And this will be given as a grant because we don't want to get take uh, equity or debt and, and go into valuations and then five years later exit at what price uh, in uh, the management control. We are just not interested. All we want is all our youngsters just do better and better. Okay, uh, so we'll give it more like a grant. And so, of course, we'll keep an eye because this is public money. So we'll keep an eye, but we will not expect any money back. All we'll expect is if you do well, we are very smart people. We know that you know, 60 to 70 percent of your cost will go into either uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the salaries or, or uh, for every sale, we'll get a GST. And for every salary you pay, we'll get 30, 40 percent income tax and GST. So we are not too bothered. We just want uh, the drone industry to do uh, better and better. The last point is on the certification. Uh, we have moved some distance. Uh, this has been going on behind the scenes for the last uh, six or seven months. So, so we have tied up with Quality Council of India for third party certification of drones. We don't want, as I mentioned earlier, we don't want any drone entrepreneur or any mining company to send us drones to Delhi or to come to us and, and fill up forms. Of course, the forms will be filled up, but we'll make it simpler and online. And also uh, for the certification, we have given the contract to uh, Quality Council of India. Uh, just last week, we have also set up the mandatory. There are some two, three committees which are mandatory, uh, panels of, of experts. There's a steering committee, technical committee, and certification committee. These are all led by luminaries, none, none from the government. Uh, many of these are luminaries from the industry uh, and, and academia uh, professors. So that has been done. And in fact, tomorrow, we have, we have uh, pre pawned We have a meeting tomorrow uh, afternoon to, to discuss the, uh, the certification manuals, which has been developed by Quality Council of India in consultation with the industry and DGCA. So once uh, the uh, the manuals are approved and uh, and IIT Kanpur, I'm very happy that IIT Kanpur, we had put out an appeal yesterday. Uh, yesterday morning, I put out an appeal for 10 drones to be uh, just donated to us uh, for, for testing purposes. And by evening, I actually had 14 drones. And, and this is all over on a Sunday. And uh, we had also placed a request to Professor Ghosh in, in, uh, in uh, IIT Kanpur, who's doing some pioneering work in, in drones. And he's like a dronacharya to many of these. He's like an acharya on drones to many of these youngsters, including Vipul. And, uh, uh, and he's produced these such, such great experts who are doing fantastic work on the drone side. And he's uh, very kindly allowed us to use uh, the IIT Kanpur, uh, 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 his own labs as a drone lab for, for testing purposes. And in, inshallah, sooner or later, maybe one day we'll have 500 labs all across the country so that you just go to the nearing lab, nearby lab. You don't have to like travel to Delhi or Mumbai or Bangalore, wherever. In the mining areas, maybe uh, in the mining areas, maybe Jharkhand, maybe uh, in Jharkhand, Bihar, Odisha, in every state, uh, ideally, uh, in every big city, you could have a certified drone lab where people can just land up with their drones, get them certified, put up the certification number online, and DGCA will issue you the UI. And so that process is already on. And as I said, tomorrow is the, uh, the first meeting of the technical committee, and hopefully that thing should get sorted out. So this, uh, I'm sorry, I've, I've taken a little longer, but uh, in a nutshell, this is what some of the things that have been done we are still at the tip of an iceberg uh, the, the huge opportunities that exist uh, uh, in in terms of drones and the sort of value they can add to the mining industry is just immense it's only and proof of the pudding is in its eating i'm sure many drone companies already working with uh, with you and as we see more and more applications because see the real value in a drone is not the the equipment the equipment can, can be called a junjuna many people jokingly call it junjuna in that junjuna it's that uh, the value of the equipment the hardware is only 10 percent 90% is the value of the human brain. What, what uh, uh, smart Indians or, or foreigners have, have the value, uh, the, the IP which has gone into it to convert the data, whatever the data or pictures or videos that you capture, converting that into intelligent insights which go into management decision making is what the real value. Sitting in, in a headquarter in Delhi, Calcutta, Raipur, or Mumbai, okay, you can see what's happening in, 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 the, uh, in, in the mines every day. Okay, uh, how much my uh, quantities come out and a very accurate kind of data to be captured. And even for, this, for the government, uh, I know uh, the amount of uh, 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 disputes we uh, have on the, uh, on the royalty issue and valuation issues, all that can be sorted out uh, by using digital technologies and drones. So I am very, uh, very, very uh, optimistic. Uh, we are sitting on the tip of an iceberg from the government side. We have a huge responsibility to, to promote demand. 
to promote supply and to improve regulations, uh, all three we are working on. I'll stop here, uh, Sanjeev, over to you, and uh, it's better to take questions uh, because I've, I've gone on a monologue for too long. Thank you so much. No, Have a nice day. Well, it didn't feel like a more long, Mr. Dubey, to be a kudos to you on that because it was very interesting. I think it's a good decision to have you on up front because uh, you have uh, uh, you have set the tone, if I, if I may put it in a very cliched fashion. Uh, one question, sir, uh, and I'm, I'm going to make an exception around this time. And uh, since uh, you may have to, you are, you are a busy person. So uh, I, I will ask you one question and then uh, we'll open it uh, for about a couple of questions uh, to, the, to the audience at large. So that they don't miss out an opportunity of asking you questions, etc. In case you have to step out in between because of uh, other other uh, requirements. So uh, one thing, sir. Uh, now I, the good part is you understand the importance of uh, uh, drones in 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 this uh, in the mining community per se as such. Is there any plan to incentivize it? Because at times uh, uh, I I think if uh, if if you can in two ways, if there can be some incentive for the mining community to adopt the technology or uh, the drone manufacturers to offer it uh, to this particular uh, segment, number one, on one side. And the second perspective is that uh, there are certain technologies which are approved for uh, carrying out boundary surveys, etc. So is there any way uh, you think that uh, there can be assistance given to uh, uh, the upcoming uh, uh, future of the country and the drone companies, etc., in getting those uh, technologies also to be approved part of a list which have to be mandatorily used for uh, carrying out certain surveys? Sanjeev, I'm sorry, uh, I think I lost the audio in between. Can you just repeat the question again? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, uh, two, two parts, sir. Uh, this is uh, uh, two parts. How can we facilitate the, the adoption of uh, uh, the drone technology by the mining community? Uh, I, I think the good part is the government understands that there is a need. The mining industry yeah, so in let's, many let's ways. Let's take, uh, take sure. uh, one by one. Let's take it uh, one by one. Uh, as I said, uh, see, uh, this is a new technology. Anything, as they said, uh, nobody wants change. There's this uh, natural uh, resistance to change. They say the only person who likes a change is a wet baby. We are not not wet babies. So uh, I think we, uh, uh, from the ministry side, uh, in every forum, we are raising. Uh, I mean, all these use cases I mentioned about infra. I mean, mining is part of the infra itself. I would say. I mean, we can, can go, go into a debate, but uh, I would say mining itself is part of the infrastructure sector, the wider infrastructure sector of the country. Uh, at every forum, we are pushing the use of drones. Uh, we have also want to go and send a formal, uh, set up a formal meeting with the mining uh, uh, ministry and make a, a wider presentation, whether it's a physical one or on a webinar. We are happy to go there and uh, showcase uh, uh, people like Vipul and many of the others uh, as to what are some of the brilliant work they're doing within mining and outside mining. And it's only when people uh, see the proof of the pudding and it's in eating, only when people see, they see actual videos, as they say, NPV, number pictures and videos. Unless we showcase the numbers and the, and anybody who used it, how did it help him in terms of numbers, in terms of uh, revenues and expenses and profits? How did it help him get a get a better uh, surveillance or better results or converting uh, uh, the, the data feed, what you sense through your sensors, converting that into intelligent analysis and how the accuracy level goes up and, and some testimonials from, uh, because we, we work on one word of mouth, we can do any amount of marketing, but we ultimately it all goes, Ultimately, it all goes down to just hold on for a second. I just call you back. Sure, sir. I just call you back. So, uh, human tendencies, people go. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. phone calls are free. I can do all kinds of marketing, but I'll just call up uh, Vipul and he says, "Yeah, sir, yes, Samsung, lelo. I'll take Samsung." So, uh, we'll do a lot of those word of mouth kind of uh, uh, things uh, through uh, interministerial uh, uh, interactions and uh, uh, and uh, uh, pictures and videos. So, I think. This is what we have to do, and uh, both industry and minister to work together. So, from that perspective, this webinar is a great thing. But we have to do much, much more evangelizing and much more marketing. Sanjeev, uh, next question, please. Sure. The the next part, next part of my question was, sir, there are certain technologies which are mandated for, let's say, boundary surveys, etc., for your enforcement service and all. So, do you think there's a scope for drone, uh, 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 you know, solutions to also get classified? That uh, maybe uh, yes, absolutely, vision. absolutely, and we have to just work for it uh, because then I, I, I can't give you a very smart answer because I need to be educated uh, and I have no no shame right. in making a public display of my ignorance. So uh, you're most welcome. Uh, walk in anytime. You've already been to my office. Uh, you don't need to take huge appointments or something. Just give a call to a WhatsApp. We can set up a meeting. Come, we'll we'll chat and uh, whatever is required to be put up at DGCA regulations, mining regulations uh, between uh, aviation secretary and mining secretary. We can facilitate that. Uh, we have a very, very supportive uh, uh, aviation secretary who helped us in various areas, whether it's MHA issues, agriculture issues, Swamitva issues, on so many issues. 
uh, even uh, from the maps issue with defense ministry clearances and all that our aviation secretary mr karola is extremely supportive he's been to that drone festivals also uh, vipul has seen him and heard him uh, personally and uh, uh, even our uh, minister sir uh, mr hardeep puri extremely extremely uh, he's he's also a very tech savvy person very supportive on on drone issues many of our files uh, i can tell you by fact within 2 to 3 days the files come back from the minister's office and 99.9% times it's approved without uh, spending too much time uh, going to the nitty gritty so they they do analysis but uh, they are very supportive and uh, this is the best time uh, that you uh, anything you want uh, if, if it requires any change in regulations please come uh, incidentally uh, i've also been given the honor of being the chairperson of the investment clearance cell inside the ministry so in ministry of civil aviation anything which is related to new investments okay investment clearance cell icc every under a capsex order every ministry now has an icc because we have to promote investments to come out of this uh, uh, shit that we are in okay so uh, please uh, do walk in uh, send, send us a whatsapp don't call bother calling send us a whatsapp come over come up with a very clear specific points to replace clause this with clause this or clause 12.3 with this and we'll be very happy to take it forward pick it up at whatever forum is required and we'll get to sort it out sanjeev Sure, sir. Thank you very much. I appreciate. It. So I'm going to open the uh, open this uh, the, the questions to everyone. So uh, uh, people on the panel, if they have any questions, please do that. And uh, I'll take a couple of questions in case uh, people can uh, send in or text in their questions. Uh, I'll be happy to put it to uh, Mr. Dubey for the next couple of minutes. I have a question for uh, for for Mr. Amba Dubey. I am General Manager Geomatics from CMPDI Coal India. Sir, uh, a, a few day, a few months back, in fact, we approached uh, an agency which was on the FTA list for training of uh, operation training of pilots, but they said that they are still uh, not uh, very equipped and uh, they are very not clear about how the training is to be given. So I think what you told right now that 11 uh, schools have been given clearances and they have they have started. So. Uh, is that list available on your website? Because we need to be the pilots. That's a good point, uh, uh, Mr. Kumar. Uh, we'll be very happy to support, uh, and uh, we will circulate that list. Uh, the list is unfortunately not put up because in Kachana, uh, drone schools, eleven drone schools have been approved. Okay, but they, they have something called a training procedure manual. It's, it's a very de de bulky document, and you know? it, uh, that's undergoing review right now. That's the only yeah. reason we have not announced it, but. Uh, uh, what I can do is I can send it to uh, say Vipul or Sanjeev and they can circulate within uh, within all the audience through the Asocham uh, mode. And uh, agar aap, uh, where are you, sir? Uh, which, which city are you in? Are you in Kakata? I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm working at CMPDI, Old India. Uh, which city? Ranchi. Ranchi. Sir, you are in Jamshedpur, you are in the past, uh, Sonari, uh, Sonari Airport. Uh, there is an agency called Alchemist Aviation. I have talked yes, to them, yes, but yes. they are not clear about oh, that. Yeah. Alchemist is done. Uske wo jo kya hai? The Miranal Paul is the uh, CEO. Yes, They've yes. already got the, the MOCA clearance and the DGC clearance. Unka sir, TPM baki hai. TPM is a matter of time. Uh, the moment I think there will be some little back and forth. Ye chapter mein ye change kar do, wo change kar do. Uske baad, uh, uh, by the way, you can straight away start right off to this call. Call up Miranal Paul and start chatting with him regarding whatever uh, training you want to do. There's a base training which DGCA CARE requires. But for you, a specialized mining uh, uh, thing can be done at his premises along with you as a joint venture. In fact, if you do it, I'll be we'll be very happy to put it to promote it on our Mocha website also as the first yes. uh, official. Because our our and, requirement is training on the drones equipped with lidar also. Sure, sure. So you and Renal, because see, he is not a drone expert. He's a he's a he's a captain. He's a flying expert. But he no, no, and his drone trainers. And you can can work together, create the curate the scores, and and issue it to the industry. And we will we'll be very happy to promote it all over the place. We'll be we'll talk about it. Now we'll put your video on the on the ministry website also on the on the okay. home pages. Okay, I'll or keep it in mind. Whenever it happens, I'll give you a information about that also. Yes. Any uh, any any, any questions? Yeah, Vipul. Sir, uh, thank you so much for lighting the whole session up. I think uh, the mining community will appreciate the support which uh, we are receiving from MOCA as well as uh, uh, for sure in near future we will we'll see a more deeper integration between MOCA and Ministry of Mines pushing forward certain mandates. 
uh, sir right now among the panelists as well as the audience we have multiple uh, private companies and enterprises which are into mining businesses as well apart from the psus so as far as uh, the current uh, provision for taking exemptions or permissions are concerned uh, it has been a general observation that most of these exemptions have been uh, provided to most of the psus and government enterprises so uh, while we are uh, putting forward a lot of effort to get the digital sky up and running with the right set of uh, uh, regulations around uh, can we have a, some interim relief or solution for the private miners also who apparently actually started using drone 6 years 7 years back when they were like very at the very nascent stage but again their aggressiveness decreased because uh, for these enterprises uh, complying to regulation becomes a very mandatory requirement and it became overburden to uh, not really follow and still go with the adoption of the technology so how how can we how can moka and us even as entrepreneurs can create a suitable environment for their adoption so that's a good question and uh, uh, yaar pehle vipul jo jo psus hain wahan to aap shuru karwao pehle that they are maybe much larger we'll come to the private part also very quickly but kahin se to shri ganesh karo na see we can talk about what is not happening instead of that why don't we talk about what is happening hamare paas uh, i'm sure uh, vipul you might have already educated uh, an enlightened people but i'll i'll just repeat it for the sake of repeating we also had this garud scheme which people uh, are aware of now which stands for government authorization for relief using drones forget the relief word i mean you can use it for mining also so government authorization for relief using drones we brought it during the uh, the corona times okay to to give very fast track approvals because when you have corona when we had the locust attack in rajasthan border at that time we don't have time for an a file work okay files going back and forth between officers so we have came up with this fast track scheme ki if it's a government client or a government authority or a government entity state or central or a psu we'll give you fast track permissions then with the support of our secretary and our minister we actually extended it to even other government entities which are not in a in a, a drought or a disaster or a corona or a locust situation mining is not in a disaster situation right even for mining we have now extended it so please take benefit of it so at least aap sarkari companies se to shuru karo coal india hai jitni bhi mining companies hai wahan shuruaat kari ek number hi number 2 on the private side as we all know and we people should again and again keep on reemphasizing even under the old car which is like a august of 2018 2 saal ho rahe hain 2 saal ho gaye uske uh, in fact uh, parson's ki anniversary second anniversary usme bhi likha hai ki up to 50 uh, i mean you know the weight categories and height categories uh, agar wo uh, 250 gram se niche with some uh, nano up to 50 feet no requirement of any approval if it's a, a, a micro up to up to 2 kilos and uh, not crossing the 200 feet again no permission and uh, agar jo private miner hai to private mining area wo enclosed space ho gaya aapki apni boundary ke andar agar aap 200 feet ke niche operate kar rahe hain aur agar wo uncontrolled uh, area hai kyunki ho sakta hai us mining ke aas pass agar koi bhi major koi uh, commercial flights nahi ud rahi hai और अगर कोई वहां पर आसपास कोई देयर इज नो मिलिट्री जोन और कंटोनमेंट और एयर फोर्स स्टेशन ओके अराउंड दिस माइनिंग एरियाज सो देन यू आर फ्री इट्स अ इट्स डिक्लेअर वी कैन गेट यू कैन ऑल यू हैव टू डू इट फ्रॉम द प्राइवेट माइनर जस्ट सेंड अस अ अ लेटर विल विल टॉक टू आवर एयर ट्रैफिक कंट्रोल पीपल एंड एंड देयर आर मेनी ऑफ दोस पीपल आर पार्ट ऑफ द कोर ग्रुप विद एयरपोर्ट अथॉरिटी विल डिस्कस एंड इफ इट्स अ अनकंट्रोल्ड एयर स्पेस और माइनिंग है 200 फीट से ऊपर क्यों जाना भाई आपको तो 50 फीट के ऊपर नहीं जाना तो जब अंडर द लॉ वी आर ऑलरेडी अलाउड देन वाई दिस हला बलू की ये अलाउड नहीं है वो अलाउड नहीं है फिर जाओ हाथ पैर जोड़ो कुछ करने की जरूरत नहीं अंडर द एग्जिस्टिंग लॉ आप दबा के उड़ाइए खूब जबा दबा के उड़ाइए जितना उड़ाना आपको ओके बट इट शुड जस्ट बी एन अनकंट्रोल्ड एयर स्पेस ऑल यू डू जस्ट डिस्कस विदेंड अस अटर वील क्विकली फाइंड इट आउट टू एयर ट्रैफिक कंट्रोल इट इज एन अनकंट्रोल्ड एयर स्पेस विच मीन देर इज नो कमर्शियल और मिलिट्री रेस्ट्रिक्टेड एयर स्पेस क्लोज बाय एंड अराउंड माइनिंग एरियाज आई डोंट फोर सी मोर अदर देन दी झारखंड एंड छत्तीसगढ़ एरियाज ऐसा कुछ नहीं है तो आपको 200 फीट आप मस्त उड़ाइए जितना उड़ाना उड़ाइए कोई किसी के किसी के अप्रूवल की जरूरत नहीं ठीक है सो इट्स ओनली इफ इट्स अ हेवियर ड्रोन देन ऑफ कोर्स वी हैव टू गेट इनटू परमिशंस बट एज आई सेड जस्ट कीप लेट्स जस्ट कीप टॉकिंग विल फाइंड आउट विल फाइंड आउट बिपुल थैंक यू सर दैट दैट वाज वेरी वेरी थैंकफुल थैंकफुल टू यू फॉर पुटिंग दैट क्लेरिफिकेशन बिकॉज़ मोर फ्रॉम द ड्रोन कम ड्रोन कंपनी पर्सपेक्टिव दैट वाज अ क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम mining companies perspective so that uh, majority of our audience is mining companies and their stakeholders so that okay. helps them uh, get a clear mandate that how they should see boundary but aap do do ki do ki center apni boundary within your boundary and up to 200 feet agar ye do aapne follow kar liya 
थोड़ा और दबा के कोई अप्रूवल कोई दुबे शुबे किसी को लिखने की जरूरत नहीं बट एक बार पूछ लो जस्ट टू बी श्योर दट इट्स है ना इट्स इट्स नॉट इन अ कंट्रोल एयर स्पेस बिकॉज देन दे कुड बी अ वायलेशन Sure. Because sometimes, sometimes these air force, uh, maybe helicopters or fighter jets or something, they do almost tree top level flying. So tree top में ना कहते हैं यार एक एक छोटी सी चढ़िया से पूरा jet liner नीचे आ जाता है. So if you are flying a two kilo drone or a three kilo drone or a five kilo drone, of course uh, there is a risk. So these are rare cases, but है ना एक बार एक बार just as I said, just talk to us. At least है ना thankfully uh, we are talking and and uh, uh, Vipul, you can also explain the uh, the live example of Agri Ministry, where on 20 May they wrote to us. 20 मई की शाम तक मिनिस्ट्री में क्लियर हो गया था फॉर फॉर अलाउंग एरियल स्प्रेइंग एंड आई एम गिविंग यू फैक्ट्स एंड वेरीफाइबल फैक्ट्स दीज आर ऑल ऑन द इंटरनेट सो 20 मई को उन्होंने चिट्ठी लिखी थी कि एरियल स्प्रेइंग हमें अलाउ कर दीजिए वहां टिड्डी आ गए हैं पाकिस्तान साइड से 20 की शाम इट वाज अप्रूव्ड ऑन द मिनिस्ट्री 20 की रात 8 बजे इट वाज सेंट टू मिनिस्टर 21 मई की सुबह इट केम बैक फ्रॉम द मिनिस्टर एंड बाय 21 की आफ्टरनून वी हैड रिलीज्ड द ऑर्डर फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम इन इंडियन हिस्ट्री एरियल स्प्रेइंग ऑफ पेस्टिसाइड व्हिच इज नॉट अलाउड इट्स अ बैंड एक्टिविटी बिकॉज़ यू आर स्प्रेइंग जहर यू आर स्प्रेइंग पॉइजन फ्रॉम द स्काइज इट्स नॉट अलाउड इन इंडिया just based on this critical requirement and and multitude of phone calls and conversations between two ministries in less than 24 hours an order was released and the ban was overturned of course only for a restricted geographical area and only for a restricted period and under the supervision of of government officials it was done so mining mein kaun sa yahan par koi itna bada risk hai jab agri mein ek din mein ek law change ho sakta hai to mining mein aisa kya risk hai jo usme to we were spraying poison from the sky poison aap kaun sa poison spray karte Bepul? totally agree sir totally agree we can establish similar uh, milestone in the mining ma- market i mean sector as well i think psus can lead the uh, lead the lead the step forward and maybe put a benchmark for the private miners to follow we have coal india and we have other psus also might be present in the audience so many of them can take a initiative and we can help them out to uh, get get the ball rolling in the coal first देखो भैया इंडिया का जैसा आपको भी प्रवचन दे दे के बोर करता हूँ विपुल इंडिया में द ओनली थिंग विच वर्क इज ग्रैंड विजन ठीक है ओके गुड टू हैव ग्रैंड विजन हैव ग्रैंड विजन बट टेक बेबी स्टेप्स बेबी स्टेप करिए एक पीएसयू के साथ एक ड्रोन करके एक सेफ एरिया में एक अनकंट्रोल्ड एरिया में दो फीट के नीचे एक बार चला के देखिए एक बार वो चल निकला और उसका वीडियो तो इन दिस वर्ल्ड ओनली थ्री थिंग्स वर्क एनपीवी एज अ नेट प्रेजेंट वैल्यू हमारे में चलता है पॉलिटिक्स में एनपी नॉट इन पॉलिटिक्स एंड इन ब्यूरोक्रेसी आल्सो नंबर्स पिक्चर्स वीडियोस एक ऐसा मैंने बताया ना एक ड्रोन विद वन पीएसयू का एक परमिशन ले लीजिए फास्ट ट्रैक और करा के उसका नंबर्स उसके पिक्चर उसके वीडियो डाल दीजिए फिर देखिए कैसे स्पीड से डेवलप होगा तो लेट्स जस्ट बिलीव इन ग्रैंड विजन बेबी स्टेप्स जस्ट एक वन 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 बेबी बेबी स्टेप बेबुल Sure, sir. Very soon, very soon. I think uh, the whole community from the drone side is working hard to get that one example set. And I think very soon the uh, your department and ministry both will receive a certain application. Uh, one of the PSUs has decided to take the leap forward. Uh, Odisha Mining Corporation is very soon to start utilizing drones for their mining operations. And I, I feel since we are engaged with them, we'll make sure that the application is processed within a week's time. आपका Hello. Is go. Hello. Ah, uh, from Coal Good India question. side, I would like to update you. We were the first to initiate the process of introducing drones in in which uh, uh, Vipul was also involved in year 2017. And since then, we have started. We have even ordered for the drones, but due to this COVID situation, it is delayed. But so far, because our aerial spread, the geographical spread is very large. That is, we are are around working in around 2500 square kilometer areas. so we have decided it, there is a serious consideration going on to uh, offload the different kinds of because it coal india you have lot of services like from exploration to operation to monitoring to surveillance lot of things are there where drones can be used so we are into serious consideration of offering these services on a contractual basis to uh, on our video milega rajneesh sir kamre mein baithe aapko tv pe video milega aap news off kar dijiyega aur ye bipul ke aur inke jitne bhi youngsters hain 
वहीं पे बैठे बैठे बस माइन आप बस क्लिक करते रहिए रिमोट से और वो बस आपको बैठे बैठा पूरा बिना कमरे से बाहर निकले पूरे हर माइन की क्या क्या प्रोडक्शन हुआ कहाँ पे काम हो रहा है कहाँ पर आलसी लोग बैठे हुए हैं निकम्मे बैठे तो काम नहीं कर रहे वो सब दिख जाएगा आपको अपने कमरे में बैठे बिना अपने कमरे हम लोगों ने वो सर्विस करने के लिए सीरियस कंसिडरेशन है आई थिंक इट विल है in all over coal india drones will have to be introduced very very fast because secretary coal is also after it um, yeah, jan sahab is very much very much interested in earliest possible introduction of drone, uh, drones so we are Fantastic. doing that so uh, uh, one last question uh, 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 for you sir uh, uh, i think uh, we can have you here for an hour or so alone, alone and uh, uh, you know there will be lot of questions kaam chhod de samay आप ही लोग गाली दोगे सरकार में काम नहीं करते बातें ज्यादा करते हैं काम कम अच्छा देयर इज वन क्वेश्चन फॉर यू स्पेशली फ्रॉम द ऑडियंस एंड आई एम रीडिंग इट आउट सो दैट दे शुड हैव एनी कोई ऑपर्चुनिटी इज देयर अ परमिशन रिक्वायर्ड फॉर बाय डीजीए टू सेट अप अ ड्रोन यूएबी फ्रेम मैन्युफैक्चरिंग इन इंडिया इज देयर एनी सच परमिशन रिक्वायर्ड इज थ्रॉन साउंड क्वालिटी कैन यू जस्ट रीड द क्वेश्चन अगेन इज देयर एनी परमिशन रिक्वायर्ड बाय डीजीसीए टू सेट अप ड्रोन स्लैश यूएवीज फ्रेम मैन्युफैक्चरिंग इन इंडिया सर आप मेरे को चिट्ठी डाल दो मैं हाथ जोड़ के खड़ा हो जाऊ कटोरा लेके आओ रेड कार्पेट हो क्या लाल दरी क्या रेड कार्पेट ट्रीटमेंट आई एम द चेयरपर्सन करेंट चेयरपर्सन आई बिन गिवेन दी ऑनर ऑफ दियरिंग द इंटर डिपार्टमेंटल विद इन एविएशन द इन्वेस्टमेंट क्लियरेंस सेल ये कैप्स के ऑर्डर मतलब समझ लिया पीएमओ के ऑर्डर से बना सो एनी इन्वेस्टमेंट किसी को सौ रुपए का भी इन्वेस्टमेंट करना हो जस्ट सेंड अल वी विल चेज यू आप परेशान हो जाओगे हमारे फोन कॉल से मैं लगा दूंगा एक बच्चा अपना पीछे आपके वो जैसे कॉल करते हैं ना क्रेडिट कार्ड ले लो और लोन ले लो वो मेरे बच्चे आपके पीछे पड़ जाएंगे नहीं लगाएंगे ना तो मैं दिमाग भी खराब कर दूंगा आपका दुबी तो नहीं चाहिए ना सर एम के लिए बट ये ये सवाल है अरे परमिशन तो भाई साहब चाहिए ही होगी आप कुछ भी बनाओगे झुंझुना तो परमिशन तो चाहिए ही होगी बट इफ इट्स If it's airframe manufacture, which is nothing but, you know, fiber plastic, yeah, carbon fiber, okay, and a little injection molding and whatever, then to, sure. if, if it doesn't require industrial license, आप बनाइए भाई. In fact, हम आपके पीछे पीछे आके आपको help करेंगे. जो भी कहीं, जो भी help चाहिए. This is this is the new Hindustan. This is no more now. वो जो हमने बचपन में देखा था, वो पुराना पुराना Hindustan. अभी उल्टा हो गया. Government आपके पीछे. आपने गलती से बता दिया मेरे को. अभी मैं अब इस webinar के बाद आ रहा हूँ आपके पीछे. Yeah. So, do, do, I, I think I, I did not have the heart to 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 stop this interaction, but I, I'm forced to do so before uh, as such. I'm stuck. He starts sending me stinkers. Do if you can please uh, stay on because there might be some uh, more questions also down the road, and uh, I, I think other people can uh, benefit from your perspective also. And you might have uh, some questions from the mining uh, companies. Half an hour, I can be there. So, if you want to speed up, do it. Or just focus on questions. Do it. So, four thirty, I have to leave. Bilkul sir, bilkul. So I, I I'm going to change uh, 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 the track a little bit because there's another uh, gentleman who has to leave uh, uh, early. So uh, keeping uh, that in mind, uh, can I request uh, um, a friend from uh, uh, Hindalco uh, to to take on the next uh, next session? And uh, after that, Bilkul, we can go to you, sir, and uh, we'll sure. follow the normal uh, no, normal chain of command. So sure. uh, uh, right. And Dubey, I really appreciate yeah. you're proving like uh, less government, more governance. so this is a uh, 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 for for all uh, this is a uh, you know in a, in a in a nutshell like what's what's exactly been uh, discussed by mr dubey right now over sir now uh, the next presenter mr uh, uh, shovik majumda from uh, uh, hindalco shovik ji please uh, quickly introduce yourself and you can take it on from that point onwards yeah good afternoon uh, to all of you and uh, mr dubey um I'm Shovik Majumdar, working in the corporate of Hindalco Industries Limited in Mumbai, and I'm the vice president, uh, looking after all the business uh, development as well as uh, global acquisition merger in uh, mining assets. Also, we operate a lot of mines uh, and um, coal as well as bauxite, and we also operate our aluminium smelters, including. CPP is almost 3,000 megawatt power. So uh, this is a brief introduction. Before uh, I take it forward, I don't have any presentation, but I thank you, Ashok Jim, and uh, for organizing this uh, uh, nice uh, discussion. 
and I am really uh, very happy to uh, understand uh, Mr. Dubey's <coughs> vision and the way DGCA is coming up uh, in this particular area. There is a reason for my happiness. I will explain, but it is really, really encouraging. Um, to tell my experience quickly, um, I tell you, as Mr. Trehan initially expressed the basic gaps between the conventional as well as uh, the <clears throat> new way of using drone technology. This was exactly the fact that we were uh, uh, so worried in our daily operation. And um, that particularly started with some, uh, uh, you know, difficult uh, issues we, which we faced almost one and a half year back in our power plants. And this particularly the, uh, the survey and the stock measurement and reconciliation. So uh, we actually searched about the processes. Uh, we we gone into much uh, depth that how we can make the process more robust because it involves a lot of areas with respect to input, uh, cost, input, quality, input, energy, and uh, energy balancing. And it involves huge uh, uh, financial uh, aspect as well. So then we we tried to use uh, drone. In uh, first we started in one of our um, CPP just to get a very accurate. Uh, our expectation was very high, and to be brief, I think it came so good with respect to certain areas, particularly the accuracy, measurement of, uh, uh, you know, coal, coal volume and uh, area, the stockpile area, demarcation of the stockpile, including various uh, grades of stockpile, so meticulously we could do. And it gave us significant confidence. <clears throat> so initially we tried one in one plan. Gradually we improved to all four major CPPs. We have seven CPP, but major four CPPs, almost capacity wise, it's uh, uh, more than 750 megawatt. And gradually, I can tell you, we used even, we increased the frequency of survey to a level of every week. And that gave us a kind of a tremendous confidence with respect to our process improvement, particularly stock balancing and others. <clears throat> we compared this and, and the way we confirmed ourselves and get confident uh, measures, we cross-checked with various other available processes. We, we consulted experts and then we came up. Now we are in a process of uh, a unique process in Indian industry with respect to digitalization and automation in our coal handling facility completely. And we are thinking of adopting more, but so far we have done this and we are very, very confident that this can give enormous value in the system, particularly productivity, efficiency, measurement process, accuracy, transport. And that gave us enormous value addition process. Now, having said that, one more thing which I want to express, I think this, will, this is extremely good for the industry to see the way uh, Mr. Dubey expressed that the GCA is trying to help industry. I request again as a, as a user, that if DGCA make the process more for usage of more easier usage um, for such uh, industrial purpose, probably this will be really uh, very, very interesting and huge potential. Now, I've been to South Africa uh, for some asset assessment 
uh, in the beginning of the year and uh, it's a typical process of mining i don't know probably you all are aware of it's a conversion of a old underground mine into an open pit mining operation now it it is so typical and difficult uh, uh, operation uh, with lots of safety and uh, measurement in place i was amazed to see the people are using drones to measure the measure to measure the movement of the ground and in fact it opened our eyes and we try we are trying to see how best we can utilize because it is they they showed us so much of analytics in the uh, process of getting it's not only survey but so much of analytics are added i think it has huge potential to really improve the mining technology in india as well and we are taking uh, such projects in in one of our uh, mining operation and we are really thinking of using a drone as well as well as the various analytics including slope stability many other things i think this and we we have a very dedicated system of uh, mining uh computerized mine planning across our uh, pan indalco operations uh, so we are trying to integrate those so our uh, our it people are involved in it so we are very serious because this gives us can give us a tremendous uh, um, opportunity to improve the um, and improve the efficiency of the operation as well as we can capture and reduce cost and give us economic benefit so this is what overall i mean as we go along probably we are looking for some more easy um, solution uh, from the drone suppliers as well as, well as with the help of dgca uh, we intend to use more this is and i i also feel that industry should think it very positively this can give enormous benefit to the entire operation thank you very much Thank you very much uh, uh, for a crisp and uh, good analysis on uh, uh, how you have used the technology. But uh, I will trouble you by asking you, uh, uh, this is a two-part question again. Uh, any any particular case study that uh, you can share, uh, which can help uh, uh, become a benchmarking for the mining community at large? Because uh, you have been using the drone technology for one time, you have deployed it effectively. Second part of the question is, if you don't, because you mentioned about analytics, so it'll be interesting because uh, how you can link it to that, and any any uh, 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 successful analytics that you have uh, uh, run uh, using the drone uh, drone data, which you can which you can share with uh, share uh, share with us, please. Um, see, uh, we uh, first question to answer your first question. As far as case study, I can definitely talk about one of our power plant where we had huge. Uh, mismatch of our uh, whole uh, stockpile uh, survey which we used to do through uh, normal survey equipments and <clears throat> so that actually uh, gave us a significant alarm to the entire process of value chain um, so then we uh, we tried to use uh, one uh, drone um, in a month just to see because we generally do a uh, quarterly review and so at the end of the year, we used a drone. We used a drone uh, to uh, get a survey uh, of the stockpiles. Parallelly, we used to do whatever we, we, we have been doing, that is manually. And then we started comparing that with those two. And we found that the drone give the pictures and the digitized surface which drone can give within a short period of time can give us much better accuracy what the normal process can give within next 10 days of survey so this uh, gives enormous it was very interesting for us to understand where the gap is if we go manually the normal process and what improvement it can give me with respect to certain area of undulation, certain uh, perfect boundary, and also time. Time is very, very important. So then we, we tried to see that 
since this stockpile uh, is a continuously changing in shape, uh, so can we really make more efficient process uh, of our own coal management process? Uh, because it involves huge costs, six to 7,000 crores of investment. So can we really check again and again within a short period of time and go closer interval of uh, reconciliation? And for that, manual process had no answer. And since we had seen that the drone can give us a better uh, transparent and better accurate results, so we used that and we got tremendous success. And in fact, this, is, uh, the, this was a practice that uh, almost, I think we continued almost six, seven months and we continuously did that, then implemented in other, other uh, power plants. So this is this is what a typical case study which I refer. Uh, the second uh, can you repeat the second question, please? The second part of the question was uh, related to analytics because uh, I think that's a very important aspect as well because it's not about uh, so that. Uh, it doesn't become a plain vanilla project, uh, a product. Uh, ultimately, you have to use the data for decision making. So, anyway, uh, you Until have, to, uh, we have some... Sorry. Yeah, please continue. Sure. No, uh, by any, any, any particular experience you can share how you have uh, used the analytics, uh, 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 you know, effectively, and uh, you can share that example with us if it's possible. Yeah, I mean, uh, we have not yet used the analytics. We have we missions as I explained that once we get uh, the easy uh, process of uh, as Mr. Dube explained, probably now this actually can help us significantly to uh, get through this through this process, and we will try to implement analytics. However. In South African mine, which actually opened my eyes that how really we can use the analytics. You know, the uh, kind of a underground process which they used to operate since 1900 years. So, old mine, I, I visited three, four mines, most of the mines, as you know, in South Africa, old operations. Um, they are operating uh, now, they are converting this underground mine into open pits. Now, while doing that, they they are taking equipment over the surface, over the worked out areas. Now, these worked out areas are very, very susceptible for movement, uh, movement because there are gaps, the pillars, in between pillars, there are um, tunnels, which are now feeding, which are now getting filled in while uh, extracting the coal or overburden over the uh, top. Now, this movement of the strata actually is the success of such operation. Not only that, there's a lots of huge amount of safety involved in such operation, safety measures. Now, what they are doing is they are using drones so accurately that on a, on a, on a particular uh, width of a seam, how the strata is moving. So it's a continuous process of measuring and analyzing the movement of the strata as well as the uh, huge overburden surface the movement of the overburden um, uh, you know on on how can i explain i mean if you see that overburden surface is one side and below that they are working for uh, um, conversion so the movement of overburden they had a couple of uh, significant accidents and now they are trying to measure the uh, slope angle, uh, movement of overburden, on and also the dump sites all through drones, and they are using this through uh, softwares for measuring that, and they are taking all the precautions beforehand. So uh, and they are now fully trained um, on the process, so they know how to use. Probably we need some more time to adapt to this process. But we, we have thought of, because in one of our project in Chhattisgarh, we are trying to convert such process. And we think 
that we will be able to utilize that we are in touch with we have got some uh, we have seen some good analytics which we can implement. Um, so that is how we are trying to uh, get this process. <clears throat> that's that, thank you, that's thank our. You so yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your experience, sir. Uh, unfortunately, we'll have to move on. We'll come back to question for sir uh, uh, later on, uh, since time is of the essence. Uh, uh, move on to the next thank one. Thank you very much, uh, Ripple. Uh, thank you so much, sir, uh, for sharing your experiences. I'm sure that will help uh, other mining uh, community players as well to. Uh, uh, try out drones etc in case this will happen definitely i encourage that uh -huh. and i thank mr dube for his clear vision on this once again i want to repeat because the way he explained i think this is going to be a great success in india thank you very much can i so uh, i'll quickly move on to uh, uh, sir please i'll also request uh, shobhita thank you so much uh, uh, those are very kind words I, uh, I don't want to take too much time, just 10 seconds. Please also uh, look at uh, using drones in your Renukut factory also. Even in, inside the factory premises, uh, see, there the biggest benefit is you have at least tall chimneys. And I'll tell you why. If you have tall chimneys and you have the water tank, I mean, tall chimneys itself could be maybe 50 meters, 70 meters, 100 meters. 100 meter karte hi aapko air blanket mil gaya, which means ki now there's air, air clearance. There'll be no aircraft coming in. If the uh, the height of the, the highest chimney, you just tell me the height of the highest chimney and I'll tell you how easy it will become. If the highest chimney okay. is like 100 meters, say, which is 300 feet, so anyway, uh, any aircraft has to maintain at least a thousand uh, obstacle clearance, thousand feet obstacle yes. clearance. With military, of course, they can fly much closer to your chimney, but the chimney is your upper limit. So if your chimney is 300 feet or 400 feet, Aram Sola, you drone up to 400 feet. Yes. You don't need any permission because anyway, you okay. don't need any clearance from anyone. So you can uh, before we go to the mines and which will we are there to support you even inside the factory for factory management or factory observation or asset management or whatever you can sitting in a room you can uh, inspect it's like a cctv which flies yeah yeah exactly i i sorry i take one more minute um, in one of our mine uh, we are operating ropeway okay for taking bauxite from hilltop uh, mine to uh, the surface and we use drone to monitor the drone, uh, to monitor the uh, operation of the ropeway. We did that and it is so accurate, so helpful. I should, uh, I mean, what I can tell you, I mean, uh, like conveyors, long conveyors, ropeways, the asset, asset uh, monitoring, as you said, we have done this and we have a good experience on this. Thank you very and much. My last for... point, that's, that's very interesting and that triggers off another thought. The last point is about the tethered drones. Ek, uh, cheez, maybe uh, Sanjeev, we can educate uh, I mean, our friends uh, because this is a technical issue. So if it's a regular encircling, it's like an eagle. You want an eagle to fly and keep an eagle eye on your asset, on, on your mines or your plant, use a tethered drone. Because see, uh, the uh, tethered drone, mein kya hai ki at least you don't have any issue. Nahi. From that tether, it's like a patang. It's like a patang. It's like a patang. It's like a patang. Unlimited. Because wires usko energy ja rahi hai. there's no battery required. Okay, I mean, okay. of course, there will be some onboard battery, but uska power source is through you. And even the uh, the video feed, right now, kya hai? Ab you through radio frequency and through Wi Fi, whatever be the communication link, the camera is the eagle eye is capturing the image and then digitizing and, and transferring it through a digital network or through a, a communication network. Agar wire laga hua hai, to wo sochi, you'll get wire quality, uh, not wireless, but wire quality. Data feed. I mean, it will be maybe a thousand, maybe a million times more accurate, and and it's unlimited power. So continuously, your wo drone will be flying. So please consider Excellent. tethered drones. Yeah. Also, it's much cheaper. And I'm sure our okay. drone experts. I'm, I'm not a drone expert, but the drone experts can give you far more value for money and uh, information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good, 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 good point, sir. Uh, but but I, I don't think so. Uh, the drone community can find a better advocate. Uh, for, for, for the industry because you you, you have a uh, you, you do so much advocacy for the drone industry fantastic so vipul uh, uh, right time for you to come in and <laughs> let, 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 <laughs> right. sir sir do i milti i think uh, the entire drone industry what they need is all the young buggers out here if i may use that uh, young gentlemen out here is the right word and the gentle women uh, they 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 give a lot of duas because uh, they, they, their aspirations are met uh, Vipul, over to you, my friend. Let's 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 uh, push it through so that uh, we don't have to go uh, uh, too much uh, uh, over time, my friend. Please. 
Sure. Thank you, Sanjeev, and thank you, everyone who spoke uh, before me and will be speaking after me. I think uh, I, I think uh, after listening to the conversation so far, I'm feeling that I should not have been uh, analyst. Should be on the audience side today. There's already a lot of uh, uh, light in lighting discussion going on. That there is nothing much to add from our side. We'll try to be as uh, make give as much justice as possible to this panel by maybe uh, sharing some more technical and operational insights into how drones can play and add a lot of value. While we have a lot of uh, qualitative understanding already, uh, we would like to give a more quantitative uh, understanding about the whole technology. And taking the privilege, uh, I would like to uh, request the SHM team to maybe allow me to share my screen so that I can maybe... Uh, yeah, thank you. Just take you through the, uh, uh, the whole presentation which I prepared for this particular session. Uh, so that my job becomes easier to explain that how drones are adding value to various uh, activities in the mining enterprises and that line there is basically to indicate that uh, whatever i'm going to speak and demonstrate is all made in india uh, from the blessings of our mentors and now most of the regulatory uh, activities which are happening we are getting stronger day by day so uh, as a ritual, before I jump into the real content, let me uh, give you a brief about the enterprise as such. Uh, we started back in 2013 from IIT Kanpur. A bunch of uh, students like us came together to form this organization. Uh, we have done a quite a good amount of work until we were uh, operating freely. So we covered nearly 3 million acres of land for India in different activities. In that small period of time, wherein the mining uh, sector was adopting drones at a very rapid speed. We covered more than 100 mines and 150 stockyards uh, for different enterprises, including government and private. Uh, over a period, because of our uh, works toward, work towards technology, we became also the first agency to get a small category drone uh, certified by DGCA. And uh, we also brought in a certain set of technologies like a post-processing kinematics GPS, which allows us to deliver the accuracies which we are basically expecting from a drone to deliver when it comes to users in the mining industry. And as we, uh, as I go further in the presentation, I'll be also sharing the uh, more details about what kind of accuracies we are working about. And since we are dealing with a lot of data and a lot of procedures, so we also uh, became a ISO 9001 and 27001 certified organization because uh, the data which we deal with have to be absolutely of high quality and security so that the information of businesses remain in the good hands. So before we start, uh, I just wanted to make sure that everyone who's the audience today uh, has a clear understanding about why we are really looking at drones and why everyone is so gung-ho about the uses of drones in different sectors. So before the drones or uh, let's say handled equipment came into picture, most of the geospatial activity was happening from the, or still happening from the satellite imagery, which again offers a certain level of resolution. Uh, in best in class, we get about 30 centimeter per pixel resolution. And uh, it is economical when we are really looking at large areas. So when we focus on small areas or very repetitive interval data, it becomes more and more expensive over a period of time. Though it only offers a certain level of details, which may not be uh, really useful for day-to-day -day engineering applications. So then came the aircrafts and helicopters where people mount a certain set of sensors. Could be a RGB imaging camera or a hyperspectral camera, or it can be very, very specific sensor which allows to do a certain set of activities either identifying minerals or identifying certain changes which is a very normal procedure when it comes to exploring minerals these days over india where the geological survey of india flies these aircrafts with uh, hyperspectral cameras or uh, sensors which sense for resistivity and based on that they identified where are the mineral reserves so uh, since we are operating aircrafts and helicopters these processes are very expensive can be used for once in a lifetime of a mine life cycle to uh, basically plan the overall activity when it comes to the uh, mineral reserve or the block level identification of resources. However, for day-to-day -day activity, it becomes very, very expensive and operationally challenging to operate aircrafts. So that is where the gap today exists. The, the technology right next to aircraft which existed was uh, using total stations, DGPS and theodolites, and now even terrestrial laser scanners. So these technologies, while they are effective in accuracy, they are very cumbersome. They require a lot of uh, manual inputs to be considered to get the right outcome. And still the, the level of details which we obtain and the data density which we obtain 
is very limited and in uh, terrains where mining activities happen it becomes more of a mountaineering course rather than the surveying course where a majority of our talented skilled pool does not opt for such kind of career because it is physically and mentally very challenging and harassing to conduct these activities and hence we get very semi skilled and under skilled laborers or uh, people to conduct these activities which again have its own repercussions in terms of the data integrity and sanctity which in turn affects these enterprises and as a whole it affects the entire nation so uh, that's where uh, it, there is a sweet gap where the drone the current modern drone technology comes into picture where you can cover several uh, square kilometers in a single day at a cost which is equal or less than the conventional surveys and the level of detail which we are talking about is up to 2 cm per pixel resolution and even better in some cases which will help you even identify a small pebble which must must be kept in your uh, uh, let's say premises and over and above that the level of details of the data density which we get allows you to conduct in, let's say analytics which is far far superior and insightful for a business to conduct its daily activity now just to give you a glimpse i have a data from the past and this is a iron ore mine owned by one of the psus so uh, i just wanted to show you this is a 3d digital twin it's not a aerial video it's a 3d model again there is a dimensional accuracy of about 5 cm in this model developed purely from a ppk enabled drone so i'll just play the video to show you that what level of details are we really talking about and then let us imagine from there onwards that what level of analytics we can do when we have such a data so this is one of the uh, chromite mines uh, in the state of uh, odisha so now you can see uh, even a small piece of pebble which is present on the mine site or a small crack which is there or a bench failure which is there can be very easily identified from this data and it is like a virtual tour of this mine and i can i can uh, precisely count the volume of uh, even a small volume of material which is lying over there and increase the productivity of the mine on a daily basis and if there is any failure happening which in this case we can see there is a water seepage happening in the mine such failures can be identified and monitored by the expert teams in the corporate offices without going to the site and this allows entities to take decisions and be very transparent about their processes at different uh, levels now going further uh, now since we are talking about exploration there are two levels at which the drone technology integrates one is at the exploration level where we are talking about very detailed terrain modeling and uh, elevation modeling contour maps to be generated using drone data and also topographical plans getting developed boundaries being earmarked and basic various basic planning when it comes to operationalizing a new mine comes into picture it 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 includes the baseline studies land use and land cover also studying the drainage patterns so that from day one the plans which are being made keeps into consideration various micro level details so that the mining operation could be made more efficient productive and safe for the times to come so on the other side when the mining operation has started such data can allow you to do your exploitation in a very very profound manner where uh, it can talk to various teams in the organization including finance mine planning safety and production so where in the finance can keep track over the productivity and the resources which are being generated utilized and also the inventory which is currently under uh, the uh, holding at a particular site and make sure that these inventories are well accounted and insured as well because most of the time we end up losing the inventory to uh, basic rain or even uh, because of lack of digital monitoring system on these inventory there are pill privileges which happen at the local level similarly this data can be used for mine plan assume that this data is coming on every week interval into your enterprise and you have a plan to pursue or a productivity to be achieved uh, in a monthly basis on a monthly basis so you can keep comparing the previous data with respect to the current data with this and with respect to your plan and find out how close you are executing to your schedule are you over exploiting the resources or under exploiting the resources and based on this comparison a optimum excavation plan or production plan can be made which is uh, catering to two different requirement one make sure that the enterprise level productivity is achieved and also make sure that the environment is basically utilized or any damage to the environment could be avoided if we are over exploiting or over running and catastrophes can be also avoided since we will have day to day information about the mine activity 
it will bring in more control it will bring in more transparency and it will bring in more planning uh, digitally driven planning to make sure that there is excellence at different levels so earlier uh, all of this or even today in many mining enterprises it happens through topo sheets and 2d drawings now imagine instead of topo sheet everything will come on your tablet and everyone in the enterprise can have a virtual tour of a mine and take decisions so your supervisor who may not be expert into certain activities can be provided an expert input by an expert which is sitting into a corporate office on almost a real time basis so it's like you doing a site visit sitting on your laptop or using your mobile phone similarly when we have these kind of data as we were seeing there water seepages and bank uh, bench failures could be identified at a very early stage and any particular catastrophe can be avoided and we always come up across with news where uh, certain let's say uh, gaps in the practices lead to a very major failures at times and sometimes even the natural calamities lead to such failures where hundreds of people lose their life because we were not prepared or we were not having a uh, predictive analytics in place so this kind of data can also bring in a lot of predictive analytics when it comes to mine operations now if we divide the whole activity using drones it can be considered that it can be uh, concluded into five major steps where planning capturing processing analyzing and reporting so all of these steps require a different set of technology and capturing which is the drone is just one fifth of the whole uh, set of technology which is required as uh, amber dubey sir was speaking earlier that it's a hardware which is a medium to collect data but there is a lot of uh, other uh, aspects which needs to be put together to make sure that the data is making sense to the enterprises or even it is accurate enough to make sure that we have right set of insights so uh, the whole whole thing is that the utilization of drone solution cannot be looked as drone as a hardware alone it has to be an end to end robust solution in one single bundle so what kind of outputs we can get you can get a very detailed 3d geo reference point cloud and ortho photo of the area contour which are conventional outputs which our industry has been dealing with and terrain models which are down to 10 cm resolution which was not earlier ever at this level of detail so uh, i'm just giving you a glimpse about how a particular mine looks like when it, you're talking about talking about a 3d model this is what this is a screenshot of 3d models which we could obtain from the drone data set and you can see the entire site is visible from bird side view or even you can roam around in the site virtually using a vr goggle and once you have these kind of outputs you can see the level of details we are talking about so this is a 2 cm per pixel resolution data of a mine and if you zoom in you can even count the number of resources which were deployed at that particular time to conduct the operation and with this kind of data available you can conduct various analytics that at a particular time how much resources were available during a particular month or a day during a particular day and what resulted as an outcome was it under resourced or over resourced and the entity can take a very informed decision that do we need to put more resources on a particular site or not and once these basic outputs are done you can also fulfill all your statutory compliances on a single click of button wherein you don't need to deploy a very laborious process which requires a huge amount of uh, foot job over the uh, whole uh, uh, site where someone needs to walk through to get the data one single data can cater to a multiple requirement and allows you to do a more proactive adherence to many compliances where again one of the compliances which people are looking at again i am highlighting this because this helps a lot in reducing the operational cost so one of the analysis which is very very uh, uh, let's say prominent and have a lot of potential is the all road analytics so these are the roads which mining uh, mining enterprise will have within their mind to carry the uh, excavated material from the excavation point to the storage point and generally these road keep shifting as the mine activity progresses and the expands so uh, there are very heavy dippers or vehicles which fly on these roads at 24/7 basis in some in, in some of the mines and once you have a 3d profile of these roads you can do a gradient analysis now there are certain safety compliances according to regulation when it comes to the gradient which are allowed on these roads you can check whether the gradients which are being followed or uh, existing on these mines are as per the safety compliances laid down by regulatory agencies like director general of mine safety and also where are the uh, points of inefficiencies on these roads where is the roughness more which ultimately affects your vehicles fuel consumption and life and these are very expensive uh, inventories or assets in a in a particular mine enterprises books so you can increase the life of these assets by monitoring these roads in this case 
there is an analysis talking about where are the pockets where the gradients are crossing the limit and whether they are high risk zones or low risk zones and over a period of time if it is done it can lead you to achieve a ideal mine which we generally study in our textbook but we fail to uh, adopt on the side these are some detailed clips into how this uh, kind of analytics looks into and then there is a width also now imagine there are vehicles flying on these roads and there are two vehicles coming across to each other and there is less width so there is a high risk of one of the vehicles getting affected or even passing through a narrow bottleneck it may uh, face a particular accident or catastrophe so if we have a proactive monitoring of these bottlenecks they can be avoided when the mine progresses further so that such scenarios do not occur at all similarly the turning radius it's just like a sharp radius if you have a very sharp radius to compromise on the road it can lead to a fatal accident and same cases happen in mining uh, scenarios as well where because a certain adherence to standard was not followed it leads to a very tight situation for the driver of that vehicle and sometimes to fatal accident as well so when we have such kind of data such bottlenecks and uh, lags can be very easily monitored to make sure that there is there is no room for such accidents and the overall operation is more efficient effective and safe so there are further more analytics like bench profile uh, the advancement analytics of the faces that how the faces of a particular mine are progressing with respect to your make uh, plan which has been made for a particular month and not only that uh, you can integrate this data to conventional softwares like surpac which are very prominent in the industry uh, to make sure that your scheduling of the mine is uh, well achieved and since there is a high resolution of data it ensures that mine scheduling uh, stripping ratios as well as the grade of the ore which you expect is well optimized over a period of time by utilization of such data so just to give you a glimpse about the difference between a conventionally uh, collected data and the drone data on the left hand side we have a data collected by the drone and on the right hand side is the data collected by conventional methodology and it can be very easily identified the difference in the level of details which we have which ultimately results into a lot of errors as well so we have less level of details higher will be the uh, the error in our estimation and as shobik sir was talking earlier uh, if you have a higher level detail available for your stockpiles the ultimately the final volume numbers which we have achieved and it has been validated in multiple ways is more than 99% which again is something which today's in the today's world is expected from terrestrial laser scanners but uh, apparently even drones with basic photogrammetry and uh, post processing kinematics gps followed by right procedures are able to deliver at a fraction of the cost this is the difference between a conventional data set on the right hand side and uh, data generated from the drone on the left hand side even the tire tracks are very prominently visible on the other side you can see there are very flat faces so this is one of the case studies which was conducted long back uh, under one of the big fours uh, umbrella to see that how accurate the drone processes or drone computed volume estimates are so in this case the client uh, basically kept a known volume of coal into their plant and then did the survey uh, using conventional total station as well as the uh, survey grade drone and as you can see at the uh, row number 10 and 11 it was found that the the volume estimates which was given by drone was having a error well within 0.5% which was not achieved from the total station uh, for different sets of data which was provided on stockpiles which were provided so this gave the confidence to this particular enterprise that drone is a much flexible fast to adopt and economical technology when it comes to relying or doing their day to day estimations in their uh, assets of their assets so uh, to conclude quickly uh, what do we get we get a volume and extent analysis very high accuracy almost real time data which further allows these enterprises to take very prompt decision uh, again driven by data not by thumb rule and ultimately when people are spending more time analyzing the problem and finding the solution the overall enterprise productivity increases the same people today struggle to collect data first and then interpret it because it is coming from different sources and uh, very conventional solutions and once the data is digital it can be shared across the enterprise more people working on the problem means better solutions and better transparency so that is what uh, ladies and gentlemen drone delivers in a nutshell there are so many other layers i think uh, uh, there are so much artificial intelligence uh, driven analytics which can be conducted for a particular mining enterprise or a mining activity uh, on a daily basis 
uh, and I feel uh, the speakers who will be speaking right next after me will be covering more on the capability which the drone data can deliver by deploying artificial intelligence and machine learning. I will uh, take the uh, exit from here and then uh, maybe if we if we have some questions, I will be happy to answer the questions and then hand it over to the next uh, panelist in the line. Triple, thank you very much for a very elaborate uh, presentation and I think put things in perspective uh, in terms of the application and how the drone technology uh, uh, can be really utilized uh, by the mining community. Very, very quick. Uh, you know, there are a couple of questions, but I don't know. Uh, you have answered most of the questions, etc. during your presentation, so it makes it difficult to pinpoint anything. However, one, 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 one for the benefit of all the uh, people who are on, uh, connected right now, including the mining community people, what exactly is the solution that you are uh, uh, pushing or, or you plan to push uh, for this particular segment? What do you, what do you offer in terms of technology? Uh, if you can elaborate very quickly on that that, 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 that would be great so that people can get a bird's eye view of what you're offering and what they need to go so, into. So, I will put it in a very crisp manner. Uh, the aim is to take uh, the whole uh, practice of topo sheets to tablets. The idea is to bring all the data on a tablet on a click of a button. And third, make the frequency of data input. It's so high that it's almost like visiting the mine on daily basis and taking updates on daily basis. And once that kind of data is available, a lot of operations which are integrated to that data can be optimized. In fact, uh, I think Ravi will be speaking more about, and I will take the leverage to introduce that particular subject, is that even your daily drilling and blasting can be further optimized and consumption of explosives can be reduced by using the drone data set. And that adds a lot of value when it comes to uh, the investment which goes into running these uh, businesses. Okay, and one of the things which is very, very necessary is that right now mining industry is at a very nascent stage of understanding the potential of this technology and utilizing it at the highest potential. And one good thing which has happened is that some of the companies in India have taken a leap forward and been able to match with the global pace uh, when it comes to technology development let it be data accuracy or even exploitation of the data. Now it is important that uh, both the mining industry as well as the regulator uh, push the level forward and start using the technology on a daily basis. And in fact, to just put you a particular subject, it is very good for from the administrative perspective as well. Uh, just to give you a particular insight, uh, in, in, in Karnataka, there are almost 62 category B iron ore mines which have been shut down by Supreme Court because of multiple violations and encroachment. Now, very recently, Supreme Court created a Central Empowered Committee, a CC, to uh, do the assessment of encroachment and the volumes which have been excavated uh, in an illegal manner to figure out that who has done how much of encroachment, what penalty they are liable to pay. And then further based on that data, they will allow the uh, utilization or uh, further operations of these mines. Now, it is very uh, uh, encouraging to see that Supreme Court Committee has asked drones to be used to quantify these damages which has happened and uh, in a particular way, all these 62 mines. So this technology is already playing a vital role when it comes to the national benefit. Now, based on this, thousands of crores worth of industry will be revoked. Okay. And a lot of people who are dependent for their employment on this local industry will get back into their jobs because some technology is coming into picture which is doing the job faster and better and where not only the technologies but the decision makers and administrators are feeling more reliability on it. So I think our role is to make that process faster. Our role as an entrepreneur is, uh, is basically to make sure that the best of the technology is available at the disposal of our stakeholders both at the user and the administrator side. Uh, only request is that the speed of adoption in the India is what we have seen takes a good amount of time in the beginning to adopt, uh, get the learning curve. I think if that speeds up, that gives us the opportunity for entrepreneurs like us to even speed up the innovation cycle, which, which generally uh, we try to match up with the global pace. But I feel the Indian talent uh, pool, which we have, has got the uh, capacity to speed that up faster than the global uh, global pace. Uh, Vipul, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to skip a couple of questions and come back to you later uh, at the end of the day. Sure. Since, uh, uh, since we are running out a little bit uh, short of time, but uh, thanks a lot uh, for your input. And uh, we'll go away quickly on to uh, uh, Ms. Ms. Ravi uh, Sahu. Uh, Mr. Sahu, you there, right? You're right there. I do see, I do see you out there. So over to you uh, quickly, sir, and uh, you can give your uh, uh, 
in information and input on the solutions that are being offered by you, sir, for this coming days. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sanjeev, and thank you to the previous speakers. I think uh, they've set the you know right stage uh, and they've done an amazing job for me uh, to pave the way to uh, really talk about uh, how drones and AI in general are playing a role here. So I'm going to share my screen here. I hope everybody can see. Great. So first of all, thank you to uh, SOHM and thank you to uh, uh, everybody in the panel. Uh, really grateful uh, for, uh, you know, people uh, asked me to, you know, participate in this. And I just on the last one and a half hour, I've gone a tremendous education how the ecosystem is evolving. So thank you for that. What, what I want to cover is I just want to uh, cover a little bit more about the introduction of how uh, drones are playing uh, more upstream and downstream role in the entire mining operations. A little bit about the company, uh, Trails, we, uh, where, where we operate is we are more of a global company. We have a big team in India, Bangalore. Uh, so it's more of a global model here. The, the platform is used in eight different countries in roughly 400 mines and quarries. And overall about 50,000 drone flights have been gone through up to two, 12 million uh, pictures analyzed. Uh, and where we focus on is really on the production side of uh, the mining operations, which is the drilling and blasting and how the entire operations can be carried out. And uh, one of the analytics Mr. Uh, Majumdar talked about is the uh, uh, movement of the actual ore. And I will talk more about that. So overall this process, uh, what, where we have focused, uh, where our customers have realized 8% improvement in the ore quality overall in general. These are some of the customers. I won't go into the details, but we cover a wide range. We publish a lot of papers by collaborating with uh, different universities uh, on how AI is playing a role uh, into the mining operations. And this is one of the code that I, I borrowed uh, from somewhere. Uh, it's, if data is the new oil, then drones are the new drill rig, which is very appropriate because if you can put your drone to a use on a daily basis, you will see a huge transformation on your mine site. Um, so how we focus is on is entire value chain. And when we look about the value chain, uh, where you can get the benefit from the same data that you're collecting, but it can touch multiple steps on your mining operations, which we call mine to mine, uh, mine to mill. So it's starting from your planning and surveying to the geology analysis and the drilling and blasting leading towards the movement of the material, which is when you're transporting and then the processing where you're putting those material into the further processing, leaching, or however you are processing in your plant, uh, how to better optimize those downstream costs and to the reporting side. So these are some of the tools that we have developed uh, uh, for each value cycle. And these are uh, considered as more from artificial intelligence driven. So when you combine these things from one step to the last step, you will start to see the real value, how the AI can, uh, improve your entire value checks. So some of the tools that uh, I would like to you know, briefly touch about is uh, geology detection AI. This plays an important role in your not work or entire mining site, but where you actually mine the ore, right? If you understand your geology better, the traditional methods are you do a core sampling, you, you build a geological model, it's not up to date. But now as you're mining, your geology changing you know frequently and you don't have that data so you're relying on the historical models to carry out your drilling and blasting as of today or the mining extraction as of today but if you are using drones uh, just to fly over and then capture a few pictures the ai can easily detect where the discontinuity is where the uh, faulting zones are there so that you can optimize your drilling procedures based on that you can easily integrate uh, into your blast design. So which means uh, you, can, uh, you can bring true value when you are having this uh, results at one place, it can circulate in downstream effect into your, how your drilling can be optimized, whether you should be drilling an angle or whether you are hitting a proper seam or not. And some of the advanced techniques uh, uh, in the other countries that has been adopted is what we call the smart drills where you can bring in the data and this is where we are truly talking about how drone data can be integrated at the machine level where we are integrating the actual machine data from the drills on top of the drone model 
where you can see the true strata of where the ore is or where the seam is going. And then further, uh, once you have done the drilling and once you have put the explosives to blast the ore, you can uh, clearly optimize and see where my muck pile movement has happened and what's the true ore quality is there. Whether I, uh, whether I got the desired particle size or the fragmentation, whether I have broken this rock in a particular manner or not, which, which is the result that everybody wants. Uh, another aspect is where we uh, help our customers is really on the exploration as well as uh, the optimization of their active mining operation, uh, which means uh, installing hyperspectral cameras in their existing drones. And we have uh, the AI solutions are playing an important role these days where it can clearly identify just based on the wavelength and then pick up signatures where the material densities are higher and you know lower. Uh, based on these spectral bands that you can see, uh, which help, can help uh, classification of the minerals. So this is, uh, just one second. Uh, this is one use case where uh, you have a mining area and uh, the customers are really looking is to double down on their drilling and blasting activity for a specific type of mineral. In this case, it was really on the uh, uh, granite side and they wanted to understand because there are the area was large and there are different seams of minerals uh, and how they can double down on that specific seam. Uh, this is one way to really uh, realize the value of the drones uh, which are quicker and better data and then additional of integration of the other different type of you know sensors in there. Uh, another uh, operations that you will realize is uh, geology is one of the area that's always been underlooked uh, when we plan uh, the drilling and blasting activity. Uh, but this has a huge effect on your cost in the drill and blast or your, how you're breaking the minerals or how, you're, uh, how we want to optimize your overall you know, production uh, you know, process here. But if you can understand the geology uh, at the very first step, where my fault lines are going, where my bedding planes are going, I can optimize my drilling and blasting activity before you even plan uh, or before you even put, put the drills into the bench. And this is one an example. It is showing automatically just based on your drone pictures where the bedding lines are going. So now I, as a driller or as a mine engineer, I have a better understanding where the fault line is going so I can better adjust my drilling penetration rate so that I don't hit the pen penetration rate is stronger so that I can hit the seam of that mineral more appropriately. Uh, this is a huge impact on how do you actually load the explosives in that specific hole as well. Uh, more importantly, you can predict slow failure issues uh, if you have all this data frequently coming. And then you can understand positional information of the discontinuity that's been uh, really done. But when we think about uh, the drilling and blasting activity, you're measuring two things what I designed, what I drill, did I get what I wanted? Which means, the, am I getting my minerals in a proper shape or not? Uh, and how much effort that I am putting into getting this? So there are various steps that goes into, which is basically planning uh, and then designing a blast and then putting those into a drill machine and then start drilling and then understanding where these uh, deviations are on the uh, as design plan and as drill here. Uh, but when we look into current practices in India, drilling and blasting, it's it's uh, uh, I won't say we are you know far behind. I think it's a, it's a good opportunity for us. Uh, just like we leapfrogged in the telecom sector, you know, we skipped the landline you know implementation in many of the places, and we leapfrogged into the directly to the cell phones. And that's where I see the opportunity here is if we implement. Uh, the drone, uh, drone based drill and blasting practices, we have a huge opportunity in the mineral production process here. And when you touch your drill and blasting process uh, improve there, you have a significant downstream cost savings in your mineral processing side because you're already breaking the mineral in a proper shape. That's why you're not uh, spending more money in your downstream cost here. So this is kind of you know, the typical process that happens in current method, which is basically pen and paper or you know, just rule of thumb here. Uh, but drones are perfect tool for uh, drill and blast operations. You can, within 10 minutes, you can define a, a blast. You are basically getting a photorealistic model. And then you can understand where my actual 
mineral seams are there uh, and then where uh, the majority of the explosives loading should happen uh, and how what is strata you know you should be loading uh, so this is a huge implications on the mineral breakage as well as understanding of the safety now you are also complying uh, with the any regulation that usually happens mostly from the fly rock issues mostly uh, the vibration issues that happens this can be controlled at before you start putting uh, the drills and the blasting at this can be controlled at the planning level here uh, so as you can see this is one of the uh, visualizations here which is really comparing the uh, planned drill shot versus the actual drill shot and you can see where uh, my explosives least path of resistance will travel so that you are understanding the mineral breakage more properly. And again, we talked about Mr. Majundar mentioned, you know, the mineral movement, uh, right? How you actually plan and the AI is a good way to do it. Uh, essentially, you are just controlling few parameters based on your timing sequence of explosives and you can check uh, how far the mineral will move, uh, you know, from this specific blast. And it is also showing different types of mass movement. Well, now I have a better understanding of how I can improve my diggability, which means uh, should I be sending a front loader to move this material or should I be sending an excavator to scoop the material here? Uh, and believe me or not, these are very important decisions a mine manager or mine supervisor makes because after the blast to control the cost savings. And if they have already a better understanding before actually you know uh, this happens where the mineral will actually fall or what type of mineral seam that they need to mine based on the overburden here they can truly uh, save the cost on the performance of the equipment or the machines that they are running so which is this is example which is showing pre-blast and post-blast comparisons of the actual you know movement here so if i can simulate certain scenarios how my mud pile movement will be with this specific blast, I, I exactly know what, how I am going to plan my uh, machine performance here. Uh, after the blast, another big uh, performance, everybody looks at how my blast has been carried out, uh, which means what my screening size will be uh, so that I have a better understanding of my crushing throughput when I'm sending this to the plant. And, AI's uh, artificial intelligence plays a really good role here where, again, you are flying a drone, taking pictures, and then AI is automatically analyzing uh, with these rock sizes, particle size, and showing you uh, its specific information, what's your diameter size of this rock is, or what's the spread out in this entire mud pile, so that now you can optimize when you are moving this material and sending it to the plant, I can have a better understanding at that diameter size of you know 50 but let's say if it's a you know a 60 inch uh, rock where do those you know rocks should go so that i can spend my plant energy here um we will talk about the hall road i would like to specify one more important uh, aspects here uh, the data plays an important role and now you can integrate different types of you know your machine data which is the tire pressure data or the other types of data and bring in into the drone data ecosystem. So now your drone as a data is becoming much and more, more valuable throughout the value chain and you can simulate certain scenarios where we mentioned about you can not only be, be safe and compliant, but now you're optimizing your uh, the road design processes when you are understanding and saving more on the fuel cost as well. If your roads are properly designed and you can simulate this on top of your drone data, see if I increase the velocity at this much, what's my tire pressure would be and what's my fuel cost would be. Uh, so the integration we see as playing a huge role in the adoption itself. And some of the things uh, more on the deposit prediction side, which is another uh, artificial intelligence tool based on the drone data, uh, which can predict specific signatures. And once you have, uh, understood this, you can apply into your other sites. Uh, if you're mining in India, and then you, if you want to utilize the same artificial intelligence model in South Africa, you can apply this. And before you step into the South Africa site, you can apply and see what type of specific signatures I can possibly get. Uh, so that's where we see that uh, AI is you know, playing a huge role in not only optimizing your you know, current production, but the future you know, production planning as well. 
So let's talk about case study. We've been talking about all of the AI, right? You know, but uh, how is it actually benefiting to the operations? Uh, first, we'll just talk about like how effective it is on the data collection process. It's obviously five times faster, but the processing of results because of the AI and uh, the manual uh, analysis that is required, that has become uh, a lot more faster now. So the more faster data you can analyze, you're acting on the decision better, and you have several scenarios to simulate. Uh, where we kind of you know focus here in this case is we have a customers which is the global metal mining operations in Africa, and they were having issues mostly on the breakage of the uh, mineral uh, related to the drilling accuracies. Uh, we helped them kind of you know they started to put uh, they got rid of the historical geological model and they started to use as real time geological data that the platform through the AI is providing which has a better understanding of where the mineral seams are. So now they're improving their drilling and the excavation of, for that mineral seam, and they saw the 30% accuracy. But more importantly, their drilling and blasting got improved. That resulted into a 12% recovery in the ore loss, which they were mining, but they are mining a lot more waste. Uh, and now with that 12% uh, ore loss that they recovered created a direct uh, say $4 million so end to end. Uh, so in, a, in all said, uh, you know, if you measure from upstream to downstream, there is a huge cost savings, you know, can be measured here. And this is just on the left side, you can see the, you know, strata based pictures, and this is directly coming from the drones and we can apply other types of, you know, data on top of that. Uh, this is another specific scenario where we talk about how it uh, actually helps another customer in the uh, North America region here, uh, reduction in the overdrill. Uh, this is a huge problem we see in every mining uh, where they are overdrilling and they're not uh, realizing the damage in the mineral seam process that they are doing. And this, this can only measure through the data-driven activity. And what they found is because of the over drilling, they were like really paying uh, to the driller uh, $60,000 you know, more uh, annually for every time that they were drilling. This is uh, another uh, case where uh, we, we love to talk about the cost saving, but this is my favorite case study where we actually helped the mine site improve the revenue. Uh, basically the top line improvement here where the customers were using certain size of, um, size of uh, minerals, but uh, they were having a lot of uh, issues on the energy consumption or the throughput on the plant level. We started implementing AI-based you know, monitoring and solutions and the drones uh, in general. They were already using drones. Uh, the application, uh, if uh, when you start to measure about the specific uh, parameters, which is the file movement, uh, as well as the uh, fragmentation analysis after the blast has happened. They were able to really measure the minerals uh, after the blast and quantify that certain block of mineral should go into my primary pressure or the secondary pressure and how they should, the throughput should be maximized. So they doubled down on that and they were not only getting uh, a better demand on their minerals uh, from the outside buyers, but also they were sa saving a huge cost on the energy itself and less wear and tear on the plant itself. Uh, so the life cycle of the plant uh, is increasing uh, here as well. So overall, we see that you know, drones is just kind of one tool where we see we are getting a picture. But I think when we think about just the improvement process, it has a tremendous value throughout the you know, mine to mill value chain. Um, so Thank you very much uh, for your attention and uh, I'd love to take any questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Sahu. Yeah. Uh, any, any questions from the panel, please? If, if, if not, uh, Mr. Sahu, I think you've been pretty loud. Yeah, before you want to go ahead. Yeah, so Ravi, I have just one question. I mean, I think this will be uh, very informative uh, for the audience as well. Uh, for the for the for the uh, increase in the top line of about uh, two million or four million you mentioned there, 
and the savings which happened with your client. Can you just give us an idea, a lump sum idea, that what was the investment they made on the technology versus the benefit which they realized? Can you hear me all right? No, now we can hear you. Yes, I can hear the question. Can you hear me all right? Okay, great. Uh, so from the investment side, one of the, uh, they actually um, uh, replace laser scanners. Uh, this is a typical method uh, that were traditionally used uh, in these sites, which are again, really bulky and expensive, you know, uh, costs associated with it. Uh, and where we uh, help them is really understanding uh, how drones can play an important role. So it's typical investment is really in the range of uh, you know, 15K to 20K that they made, and they got those, you know, upwards of, you know, 10 times, you know, return already, you know, from that. So I think there are different cases here. One case was more on the drilling over, uh, over drilling side, but one on the top line side. I think top line, I think they got upward uh, uh, returns on 300 times percent here. I mean, that answers the question. That was most from mostly from the uh, viewer's perspective that what is the return on investment on a technology? Generally, it is long term and yeah. uh, hundreds of times. So, yeah, thank you for that insight, uh, Ravi. So, Vipul, uh, unfortunately, I have to leave. Uh, I wish I had more time. This has been a, uh, just wanted to congratulate us, Cham, and all the organizers again. Uh, it's been a fantastic uh, learning point for me also. And uh, wish you guys all the best. And I can only assure you that uh, any any help you require from the aviation ministry side or DGCA or any of the other associated organizations, we'll be very happy to support you. So all the all the very best and have a very nice day. Thank you and uh, Jai Hind. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. It has been an honor and pleasure to have you again uh, with us. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Ravi, I, I, I think uh, uh, we, we'll come back to more questions for you. One very, very quick uh, uh, question. I think uh, your experiences are more based out of India. Any plans for India? Are you already starting projects in the country? Yeah, we, we have uh, done a few projects in India. Uh, and uh, we, we have a team in India. And a lot of the technology that you are seeing is actually been developed in India by India, you know, based uh, team based in India, although we operate globally. Uh, since we saw the demand uh, coming more from the global level, uh, we, we continued on that. But we have a big ambition to kind of, you know, really help uh, the mining sector in in, uh, in India. And uh, uh, while there are not so much uh, activity has happened, we are really uh, hopeful and we look forward uh, to the future partnerships. Thank you. Thank you very much. So moving right along, uh, I, I think uh, uh, we can we need to go to the next one. and. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Rajneesh Kumar, he's been extremely uh, patient uh, waiting for us. Uh, uh, over to Mr. Rajneesh Kumar. Um, uh, he is the general man geomatics for uh, CMPDL. And CMPDL plays uh, a huge and fantastic role as far as the mining, uh, especially in the coal mining side uh, in India is concerned. Uh, is Mr. Kumar there? Mr. Kumar, are you there? He's left. He's left? Okay. Uh, Sherry, if you can try and reach out Mr. Kumar and uh, you can bring him over. And uh, in the meantime, can I can I request uh, uh, Mr. Srivastava uh, to, to start presenting? Uh, Okay, uh, so uh, just a brief about myself. I am Piyush Srivastava, uh, uh, over 32 years of experience in uh, mining, underground mining, open cast mining, mineral beneficiation, uh, planning, lots of planning, uh, land acquisition, and uh, also in the improvement areas. So what I'm going to speak is more, uh, mostly from the user's perspective, 
and uh, the first thing which uh, i mean very good presentations the first thing which i would like to uh, admit is uh, it's not the drone technology per se which is more important to me it is the 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 software application because once you get the data from the drones whether it is the uh, the through the digital cameras or it is through the spectrometers how you process the data that's the 80 85% of the job so uh, we did purchase few licenses of uh, uh, context capture and i found that uh, using those uh, there are so many applications of the uh, the, the 3d mapping software now people use mostly for, uh, the uh, the pix4d or uh, ad soft or context capture or uh, uh, other software the application of software they are huge application software so uh, i will just go through the divide this whole applications to four parts most of it has been covered uh, one is the survey other is the mining applications third is the project management fourth is in the exploration areas exploration and geotechnical areas on the survey side we talked about uh, the measuring the stockpiles you know contours uh, uh, but when we talk about the measurements of the solid faces how much volumes have been removed from the faces i think one has to also consider how you have, one has to use the geological models the geological models whether you use serpac or vulcan or whether you use the minix to import the point cloud data into the mining software then it becomes very easy so the drone data and the point cloud data has to be used in conjunction with the mining software mining mine planning software once you can do that and then you can really uh, you're able to plan so well uh, currently we we have done this uh, for our uh, we have uh, in one of the mines we use the drone data and then we measured the volumes through serpac now we are doing the same thing in the open cast mines uh, and the other important part is when you do this uh, when you do the contours also you know the the water drainage plan etc those also can be very easily you can make uh, from the survey data coming to the mining applications uh, uh, you talked about the whole road analysis uh, you talked about uh, the uh, uh, use of the drones for uh, 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 use of drones for uh, the measuring the quality of the air or measuring the blast performance or uh, the planning for the drilling these are okay but there are other many other applications one of the application which i would like to point out is in one of the mines we have to uh, we have to divert a road along a the mine boundary now when i have to divert the road along the mine boundary i have to create an embankment and when i have to make the road there is lot of cutting and filling involved so now if since i have the 3d model i can using the contest capture uh, capture i can calculate the cut and fill volume which is required i can try out two three options and find out which option is a better option so that way the planning becomes much easier how much embankment that i have to make what is the strengthening which is required against the high flood level that is also i can easily plan uh, then there are applications in the uh, rnr uh so in one of the mines uh, before we started the rnr activities we took a 3d map of the each and every dwelling each and every house so i know a, a geo reference and a time stamp this is the house where it is so somebody now tomorrow cannot come and claim that he had you know two houses or three houses or the area house was so much because we had we got very clear visible pictures of what he owned and how much compensation have to pay uh then uh, the gis technology also has to play a very important role about uh, in this with the drone technology what i mean to say is then georeferencing today there are technologies where through drone directly georeferencing can be done but what we have been using arc gis and through dgps survey we use the cadastral layer and cadastral layers once they are georeferenced using dgps survey then we put them over the ortho mosaics which we which we obtain from the drone data once you superimpose the ortho mosaic and the uh, and the uh, the uh, the cadastral maps and then use arc gis then it is very easy to get your uh, the land use plan now most of the mining companies they would use autocad or they would use serpac to you know take out the make the plans in sections uh, that 
I mean, mining companies have to move to uh, the to 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 to, to ArcGIS and use the Orco mosaic. Then you get very accurate land use plans. Then coming to uh, the uh, other uh, the project management, one of the application is when you have a construction site and you want to understand the uh, the the progress of the construction. One of the very simple and very good method is just take the pictures or just take the video graphics of the area and every month you can see the visuals using some analytics certain other uh, added on software you can actually see the measurements of the progress you can see the and you can actually measure the metric cube job done or various units of job which have been completed one more uh, i think use of uh, uh, this uh, drone technology is the uh, the virtual reality model so if you, if you if you have a 3d model of the mine now you want to construct a say a overland conveyor between point a and point b now you want to find out which is a better way then of course you can uh, find out the uh, uh, various uh, uh, routes you can see the height of the thresholds which need to be created or which need to be erected and also the cut and fill volumes which need to be done so uh, through without uh, you know using just using a 3d model you can you can you can calculate uh, the which is the best option to uh, the route for this uh, overland conveyor. Uh, of course, uh, other very important area is uh, uh, for the blending. So in a mineral processing plant, you cannot take anything. So you have to actually take them uh, over from the, especially in iron ore mines or metal mines, you have to give a particular mix of the minerals to the beneficent plant. So if you have a 3D model, and if your geological model has been updated, from time and again, every month you update your geological model based on the data which you get from the drone survey. Then you are you can actually very precisely tell, I will on this particular day take out uh, x quantity from shovel one, uh, y quantity from shovel two, and C, uh, x uh, z quantity from shovel three. And what is the mix of that? Because now you have a accurate analysis of the lithotypes of the chemical analysis, and that will help you in blending. Uh, another application, I think people talked about geotechnical survey. We are using a, a software called uh, uh, FLAC 3D for the geotechnical investigation. And uh, the input which is required in the FLAC 3D is the mapping software. So you go to the mine, understand the what are the uh, what are the fractures, what are the uh, uh, cleaves, where is the fault, so and what is the in in inclination of the uh, faults. Those data measuring is very difficult. Even going to the slopes and measuring through a tape is very difficult. Now, when this data comes to us through a drone survey, we can actually measure the entire, we can, that input, mapping input, which is required for the FLAC 3D, can come very easily, very fast from the drone survey. So that data, once we put into this, uh, we can uh, get much better results. Uh, then, uh, uh, there's another application which we are thinking of venturing out is on the uh, building information model. So uh, using uh, uh, not a drone exactly, but through scanners, uh, making a complete uh, 3D model of the entire uh, the inside of the factory so that uh, one can remotely see what is happening and also use it for design purpose. So from Tata Steel, uh, we have uh, we are going to very shortly finalize the contract. Uh, uh, I think Mr. Dubey talked about uh, the private sector. I think uh, we are going to phase away uh, the total session survey in next uh, uh, one year or two years. Total session survey will be done, but in next two years, we will be completely switching over to drone survey and using analytics uh, and other uh, uh, tools to uh, you know manage the mine. So our chairman has a vision that MD has a vision that we should be able to control the mine not just at from multi-location mine one place, but uh, say from Jamshedpur, can we control the mines in say, uh, which are in Kyonchar or which are in Jamadova or which are in West Bokaro. So that is what we are moving on. We have targets of maybe around three years. We should have remote controlled mines. Uh, so a lot of digitization has taken place in the area of uh, fleet, uh, uh, the truck dispatch system or fleet management system. Uh, uh, 3D uh, uh, third level automation or in terms of the safety analytics. But we are uh, we are yet to uh, go up to the scale so far as drone survey is concerned. And I think without drone survey, 
complete digitization is not uh, possible and that is our journey so in next two years we we in the private sector i'm very sure we will make a very significant progress so far as drone surveys concerned thanks that's that's it from my side thank you very much sir uh, for uh, uh, sharing the experiences on uh, on how uh, musician has utilized the technology not only uh, the drone uh, technology but amalgamation of the technologies to uh, to help in uh, planning decision making etc uh, so i guess uh, we coming to the end uh, of the session i really appreciate everyone we have uh, run uh, you know over a little bit but not bad we just we just off by around 20 minutes but uh, there were some interesting presentations etc starting up mr dube no doubt about it so i uh, will open up uh, the floor to questions and uh, will they need some help from the uh, uh, tech team at uh, as as to champ to get the questions in uh, one question uh, which is there which i can put it open to uh, to everyone including vipul i guess how does the geographical terrain images taken by drone companies with those taken by uh, compare with those taken by satellite imagery which one is more accurate and comprehensive so i guess vipul this should be a cinch for you well, i think uh, all the panelists uh, currently on the panel have got good experience and uh, first hand experience on that uh, particular aspect uh, just to answer uh, technically and uh, more precisely on that question see the images which we get from the satellite uh, if we talk only about the 2d images uh, the best in class image which we can purchase today uh, is about 30 cm per pixel okay that itself is just a 2d image okay now uh, if you want to do a 3d image then the resolution which we can get is about 4 to 5 meters not as good as even 30 cm so that's the level of detail which we get from a 3d image now these data sets are neither very high resolution nor having the right dimensional accuracy when it comes to the z level which is absolutely mandatory when it comes to day to day uses of uh, data in a mining environment where we are concerned about working out the volumes uh, or change detection which is happening at a very micro level so when it comes to drones the data which is generally being used is about 2 to 3 cm per pixel compared to 30 cm per pixel best in class data available and it can be collected on demand basically if i want the data for the current scenario i can fly a drone and within 30 minutes i can collect the data and within a couple of hours i can have a 3d model of the area available and with the right technology in place let's say if you have a direct geo referencing technology on a drone which is the most superior set of technology right now available on the market or even if you have a post processing kinematic gps of the drone uh, with the combination of gcps you can obtain an z level accuracy of about 5 to 6 cm with a 2 cm per pixel resolution data now uh, the volumetric accuracy itself when we are talking about is 98 to 99% for such kind of data sets and practices which is uh, not at all closely possible with the satellite data sets so when it comes to very superficial level of planning uh, monitoring satellite data works but when it comes to vertical assessment and a level of detail which we are looking at there is no comparison to what drones can deliver today in fact uh, we have seen cases earlier where the satellite data is being used by indian bureau of mines for encroachment have failed to detect the uh, encroachment and issues which drone data could could do with more than 99% accuracy and uh, for the mining companies it's more about using it on a daily basis so that certainly cannot be served with the satellite data because the frequency of satellite data collection itself does not meet the requirement uh, if we just leave behind the aspects of resolution and accuracy uh, any anyone like to add to it or should we move on to the next question yes i'll move on to the next one uh I guess this can be answered by the people in the mining community uh, uh, as well. Uh, how have you found the uptake of uptake of I think drone technology in the mining sector? That's a procurement and resource capability. So, so again, can I uh, answer? Yeah, yeah, please. So uh, this uh, uptake for this drone technology, this is also a kind of change management. So. Uh, it's not easy for somebody who was saying you can uh, implement it easily in coal india it's not going to be that easy now imagine a situation the people understand the benefits the benefits are huge somebody talk, talked about a 10x roi completely agree with that the productivity improves like anything but it's a change management ultimately the users have to be very tech savvy 
they they have to use very so many softwares and i can tell you an example from my my experience the surveyors have to learn new software today they are using autocad or just serpack now they have to shift to many new you know software this transformation is not easy so it's a the the resistance is a change management the benefits are huge but when you use when you uh, when you change your way of working that itself is a big resistance so that is where is the the challenge is there and no where else there's there internally there's a there's one question for you sir uh, it popped up right now uh, any use a uh, use case for application of drone technology other than topography survey and mineral exploration at tata steel i think ripple the picture which ripple shows of venue from tata steel so uh, i think all those things that you talked about we have uh, we have actually implemented in parts and pieces uh, using our own software and also using the software of third third parties when i when i say our own software means it was uh, context 3d bentley uh, uh, software but uh, i think every application we have done uh, bits and pieces on a uh, on a big scale where we cover all our uh, uh, 10 12 mines we are going to start uh, the journey uh, coming uh, september october uh, but i can give you presentation of what we have done in bits and pieces and all the mines i think all this that we talked about we have completed many of these things we have done uh, we don't have a uh our uh, uh, presentation from cmpdl right now mr rishno actually i had some questions for him as well but there's a question which uh, has been there since beginning is uh want to ask how to reach psu for mining surveys uh you know how what to, is how, what you, how to reach a psu for mining survey it's very difficult to reach a psu so i don't know if anyone can take the question so yeah no, I, I, mean, I, I can share my experience it's very easy to reach a psu and the decision maker the journey after that is very difficult to convince them to use this and then further getting into the procurement process so uh, i think uh, reaching out to them is not it not it's not an issue at all converting that into a business and practical implementation it's like too much process driven uh, activities and procurements are very cumbersome processes in psu so it takes a lot of uh, patience and persistence there so uh, it, it it's a natural process which you have to adopt yourself to i i would say rather just to add to it you know survey is a uh, is a is a is an area where there could be vested interest okay so now if you try to uh, make survey very transparent and that change when it again that question is there so i know uh, even in coal india uh, it has not been easy to adapt uh, uh, you know to get on to this technology because of a uh, lot of uh, the risk is to change. Well, absolutely, because uh, resistance is there everywhere. So whenever something new comes in, and uh, no better example of a computer. But, uh, you know, we, we have been all. Uh, I've been part of the industry where we have been trying to introduce technology, and uh, there is change. So very well said uh, uh, as for that. So I guess this is this is open for uh, everyone again. Are there any research topics for engineering colleges in this domain? So anyone would like to take it. Uh, I know, Mr. Mr. Sahu, maybe you can also also uh, you know contribute out there from your, uh, from outside of India. Is is that a field which is picking up uh, drones for mining or something? Like that? Yeah. Uh, so we've been collaborating with uh, different universities and re uh, research organizations, and we are seeing a tremendous uh, not only just the excitement but the practic driving practical applications. And one of them is like how do we measure? Uh, in the underground mines, uh, the ventilation issues that usually happens through drones, uh, the gas gets trapped, uh, you know, with uh, you know different drilling and blasting that happens, and it's a, really a safety and ha uh, hazardous situations. How we can uh, use drones in those scenarios? Uh, uh, more importantly, uh, there is other areas that they, uh, uh, they've been uh, experimenting is. Uh, environmental issues after the in the large open pit mines especially in the coal mines what happens is when you blast you have a lot of dust that you know goes in and the dust gets accumulated and it moves into a civilian areas so they are building a swarm of drones where how they can track the dust dust and uh, so that it doesn't uh, and then basically kind of you know do a quick analysis of how they can control the environmental issues with because there is in a, in a powder river basin, basin area in the North America here in the Wyoming area, this is a typical issue. 
and they are deploying drones, a form of drones to uh, tackle this dust issue. This is still in the research phase, but uh, there are various types of interesting uh, applications has been uh, you know carried on and uh, from the research perspective. Mr. Shiosa, you were saying something? So, somebody was talking about the AI-based applications. So, I think there are many areas. For example, one of the areas where uh, we have given a challenge to one of the consultants and he's working on it, is uh, uh, when, you, uh, uh, when you have to give the, uh, what is the fee to the, uh, to the beneficent plant in iron ore mines? And we have one of them, which is, the, which is a, uh, almost a 20 million ton spine. Now, uh, there, there are, uh, there's a jig feed and there is uh, other conventional uh, classifiers are there. Now, how you pick the uh, material from the various phases is not easy. Even if we have a sample, uh, the sampling process is four hours and, and you have to, the shovel has to pick the material on the real time basis. So sure. can I have some method of understanding the, uh, the, through the drone data how, what is the distribution of the mineral across the phases? So, uh, uh, you know, there is some machine learning AI based uh, applications where you now, uh, from the drone data and from the chemical analysis, can you integrate the two things and understand the, at the lithium level and as well as the chemical level and the min mineralogy level, what is the distribution of the material? Can you update your geological model accordingly? So these are the areas where if we can go deeper into it, then a lot can be done. Very nice. Uh, uh, one more question that's come in is like, uh, again, I leave it to across the community. Uh, comparing traditional survey uh, saying that drone provides 99% volume accuracy, but financial aspect, uh, it's huge difference. How will it be managed? But anyone wants to take that? I can. I, I, I can tell. Know, I, I guess. Sure. Please, sir. No, I, I think Piyush sir has a first-hand experience. I have a very uh, contrary observation when it comes to cost of conventional technology and drones. Yeah. I'll I'll take what's just say. Say a West Bengal mine, which is 17 square kilometer mine, at a few years back, I'm talking five or six years back, we were preparing the first mine plan. Uh, there we took uh, this uh, drones, uh, this uh, uh, you know normal total station survey to get the contour of the area. That 17 square kilometer took us almost nine months to get the contours, you know, at two meter uh, levels. We have just completed that in about five days time. Okay, now you look at total station survey. A person goes with a total station. He somebody carries the staff. There are two people with the machine. And then there are so many other people who move around with the, the staff, okay, or the prism. The for each survey, there are at least five or six contract contract workers, or sometimes even 15 contract workers. So in a mine, you are 10 times slower, you have 10 times more manpower. Now with a drone survey, you get higher level, if, if much higher level of accuracy with one tenth the manpower and one tenth the time. You can easily imagine how productive it will be. Actually, coming from you, uh, Mr. Shiva, that's 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 exceedingly. So, in fact, uh, the right right question, Sanjeev, uh, should be on two aspects. I think per hectare basis, also uh, the drone technology is far more affordable in the current scenario uh, compared to the total station conventional total station and DGPS survey, as per my experience and procurement processes I have seen through. And on the other other side, it's like not return on investment; it's also return on time investment investment invested into the process. So I think uh, time is of higher value than the money. Uh, apparently in India, we generally miss that part. So well, the ROP is I, very high on the drone technology. I, I can also watch for something because although I'm shooting shooting myself in the foot because uh, you know I'm, I'm responsible for saying a lot of the convention technology that you see operating out there because GPS, total stations, et cetera, scanners is my bread and butter. Uh, uh, but uh, you know we have to do what is what is right. Uh, I, I, I guess what one has to look at is the cost of ownership. It's not the initial cost or the upfront cost. At times in the country, uh, and I've been saying that for decades, uh, uh, we, we, we have a tendency of looking at uh, uh, the immediate cost or the short-term cost of uh, owning technology. And we don't look at the cost of ownership over, uh, over a period of time. Uh, if you start looking to taking that perspective, you will have a, a totally different, different perspective what can actually, what valuation. And Mr. Srivastava has, as just aptly put it, 
it, it makes a lot of difference if your perspective changes. If you're looking at uh, you know, the glass is half full, it is going to be half full. If you look at the glass is uh, half empty, it's half empty. That's, that's the only analogy that comes to mind. Uh, let me see, ouch, uh, a lot of questions have popped up. Uh, how accurate the Treos AI software at real field in percentage? Ramiji. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, kind of the, uh, we like to kind of go back to our customers, how they are realizing the value and how they are validating the AI themselves. AI is basically, it's making uh, uh, the way I would say that the interpretation and the processing, the manual interpretation that's requires makes that part uh, is e making it easy. Uh, at the end of the day, it's the human who are making the decision. Uh, Let's pick an example of AI, which is the uh, uh, fragmentation analysis, which is after the blast, you can truly quantify different size of rocks. And the way it's been compared with the traditional methods, which is the uh, applications where you are comparing, putting a scale and you're marking in the rocks itself, how big the rock is. And then after you fly a drone and you capture the pictures and the AI does its job and measures the same rock at the same you know, centimeter or same inch. Uh, that's how the comparison has happened. It's pretty, uh, you know, spot on. But there are uh, different universities have come together and they've done uh, their own research, how our AI is, you know, accurate or not. And uh, the results has been, uh, you know, not only promising, I would say it's, uh, they've given a pass to the AI in such a way that uh, uh, it should be utilized on the mine site on a daily basis. This is uh, a better approach, you know, to do it. Um, so we kind of, you know, let uh, the customer speak, you know, proof in the pudding itself, uh, you know, scenarios here. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. I'm getting instructions to close on the session now. People are getting uh, impatient and we have, we have to move on. So really, uh, it has been good and we still have around close to 100 people still all logged on. So that's, a, that's always a good sign to have that many people around. Uh, you know, uh, it's been a very interesting journey, and really thank uh, AstroCham to organizing and giving giving us the opportunity and me the opportunity to, to coordinate this as well. Uh, I, I guess we need to have uh, more sessions like this. That's that's ultimately uh, what what it sounds like, and people need to uh, learn from the experiences uh, from our valued industry members like Mr. Shivastava and uh, um, uh, you know Mr. Mr. Majumdar. I think they they can share their experiences, etc. And and if it's okay, Jada, I I would encourage people to get in touch with you directly as well. So if it's okay with you, I know you're going to be uh, uh, you know short of time. But if other mines uh, mining companies want to explore uh, this particular technology, that would be a good idea. Uh, so really uh, really uh, appreciate uh, uh, Mr. Shivasta, you and Mr. Majumdar added uh, a perspective, a real real life perspective of how you're using the technology and putting it to good use. And not only uh, using the drone technology and the add-on technologies in terms of software, analytics, etc., that uh, makes the makes the entire experience much more enriching. Uh, it was great uh, uh, listening to Mr. Dubey as always, and I think uh, there were a couple of mood points. Uh, uh, you know, there are plenty of interesting things, but I guess uh, one thing is is very clear about is uh, if you have any issue, just come directly. So that openness, that uh, uh, cutting the red tape. Etc. That that came forth very very seriously. Another interesting uh, point for uh, all the drone companies who are manufacturing equipment uh, in the country and uh, and other uh, aspects of the drone uh, uh, manufacturing process. Uh, I guess he's also looking after the investment side uh, from the government India perspective. Go up, call him up, land up out there, utilize this opportunity to uh, uh, you know help uh, take some help from uh, the government and create a. So I, I can talk a lot about uh, you know what all he's mentioned. Uh, but uh, uh, it's possible paucity of time. Uh, whatever I say is going to be less. Uh, Vipul uh, gave, gave a great example of how, uh, from a drone, uh, drone company's perspective, how the drones are adding value to the mining community per se, as such, and what all is possible, uh, not only from the capture point of view, from the analytics point of view also. He, uh, you know, uh, built that up uh, beautifully, and he talked about various application case studies. And he was, uh, you know, uh, followed by uh, Ravi in a, I think that was a good, uh, uh, good uh, chronology of uh, presentations because we talked, we went from capture of uh, data using a drone to how to utilize it, and AI is a field that that's right now in, and how we can utilize uh, that particular technology 
in conjunction with drones to uh, make uh, decisions uh, very quickly. And I hopefully down the road we'll talk about real-time decision making, uh, not only post-factor decision making. That's what future is. So uh, thank you very much uh, to everyone. Uh, I'm sorry, it's 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 uh, it's go, uh, it gone. Uh, it's, it's time has exceeded uh, beyond uh, what was uh, initially mentioned. But I think there were some interesting uh, uh, discussions and presentations. So look forward to catching up with you sometime in the future as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks, thanks.